sat as a member of the council. Until the appointment of our sister, Mrs. Irene in your book, to the secretary, as secretary of the forum, she was also a member of the council, representing the South side. At the state level, each state is headed by the state lead. Branch facilitators are appointed from each branch of the MD to work with the state lead. They all contribute to complement the work of the various committees. River State Group is led by Mrs. Glory Uzu. The worships, Bennett's news, and colleagues, in view of the foregoing, were here to welcome very warmly our new beats to the forum. We welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are about to start, to start fully, and we need to introduce the speakers for today. You know, to the podium or the high table. There's no high table, but to the podium, so that the event can start fully. And we have in our midst very distinguished members of the judiciary. Now, the keynote speaker for today is none other than your worship, Dr. Rita Ogugo. Your worship, Dr. Rita Ogugo, is the deputy registrar of the of the River State Judiciary. You're welcome. So, please invite me. Again, seated in our midst is another speaker for today's event, and he's none other than your worship, Mr. Victor Wake. Dr. Victor Inouye is the director of the State Multi Door Court House. You're welcome to watch it. Also, one of the speakers for today's event is your worship, Lady Baridam Apa. She is the chief magistrate of the River State Judiciary. You're welcome. The very simple people, and now the last speaker for today is Mrs. Irene I. Kevin. She is the general of MBA Women of the Welcome. Now that we have all our speakers seated right there, may I now call on the chairperson of the events planning committee to please come up for her speech. You're welcome. It is with great honor and gratitude that I welcome us all to this event. The quarterly seminar of the Nigeria Bar Association Women Forum, because they could. Interestingly, this coincides with the reception of the students. And we have the privilege as well of uh, being introduced. The uh, MC has introduced us, uh, introduced the speakers to us. We have the privilege of having these respected members on the bench. I'll be speak to, be speaking to us of diverse topics and our own Irene Pepper that has made us proud on all fronts. And so um, we welcome our speakers, especially. This is not just this seminar, is not just for the benefit of the new weeks alone. I'm attend, I'll be attentive while the lectures are going on. It's for both new weeks, old weeks, retired weeks, 
whatever category we decide to, you know, place our dogs. We listen to very interesting topics. The keynote speaker will be taking uh, the first one of professionalism, innovation, and ethics, possibility for advancement. We shall also be listening to um, a talk on building a formidable legal career through the alternative dispute um, resolution. ADR, we will be hearing from the host's mouth as it appears, you know, an expert in the field. And we will listen also to a paper or a talk on female lawyer for this in character and dress code. Very interesting. Interesting. Relevant, fundamental, and key. Then we have digital law practice, the play of a new week. It's also for all of us, because some of us are old school and I want. It's only for the new new week. I will also benefit so as we are attentive, as we listen. I am positive that we are going to be better than we came. So before this lady comes up to deliver her welcome address, let me quickly um, appreciate our generous sponsors quickly. Uh, there are many that have made this program become a reality, else to have been just an aspiration. I want to particularly thank Elder Wilkos Abereton, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. My money is still a construction company, top professional solution groups, chartered accountants and tax professionals. And Mr. Hillary, I am an and I own Mrs. Joma Mbahurite. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making this program a reality. And um, before I leave, look, uh, some housekeeping notes for those who are not conversant with this uh, environment, with this MBA house, please, as you step out, just on the left, uh, the convenience is there, and then we have others on um, other floors. If there is any question, clarification that you seek, please feel free to approach me or other members of the planning committee. I'll be happy to assist. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's now time to welcome the state's lead. But before that, we have in our list Mrs. Fabia Wavi Mack. She's representing the, the chairman of the um, Degema branch. So please, ma'am, we would like to welcome you to the front seat, please. That's welcome. The deputy branch chairperson of Degema branch. Please welcome. So please, it's now time for us to hear from the state lead, River State lead of the MBA Women Forum, Dr. Glory O Ozuru. Please welcome her. The worship Dr. Rita Ogugwa, the Chief Magistrate Admin of the River State Judiciary, you're welcome. Your worship, Mr. Victor Wiki, Director of the River State Multi Door Courthouse, you're welcome, sir. Your worship. Mrs. Len Eldar Apa, Chief Magistrate of River State Judiciary, you are welcome. And our Ebu GS, <laughs> Ebu and Ami Ebu GS, we welcome you. Thank you very much. It is my delight, I'm so happy to welcome everybody here present. I know we have some chairmen online, this, our distinguished and able chairman, they are online watching and cheering us up. The 
But I could grant chairman, Mr. Victor Benibor, unavoidably travels some days ago. He's not around, but he at least showed his love. He gave us this honor free of charge. Our two, thank you, thank you. Our ex chairmen are very wonderful persons. They're always there sharing us, sharing their ladies up. I just want to welcome again, Dr. Mercy Okechinda, the brain behind, she and her team are the brain behind this um, seminar or reception. I thank them so much. They did a very wonderful job. It is also my pleasure to welcome everyone seated, okay? So this reception, which is every okay, we have mentioned her. Sorry, I'm, re I'm reading again what I read before. I would like to extend my special welcome to the guest speakers whom we have mentioned earlier. And we have believed that at the end of it all, they are going to give us a um, wonderful take home. After listening to them, we will, we will know they are going to do very good uh, justice to the legal, to the topic, the legal career in the 21st century, prospects and challenges for the new week. It is for the new week, but I bet you that those of us who are already um, let's say, oh, let me not say, oh, so that I don't offend my seniors here. Seniors, even the seniors online, please don't be offended. We are juniors. Um, we know that at the end of the day, it's not only the new week that will be blessed. We too, we are going to live here um, refreshed much more than we were before. We are thanking, I mean, we are welcoming again um, our resilient and the uh, Supporting seniors, they also give us their um, they also give us their backup for us to succeed. We thank the Omo branch. Uh, oh, we welcome the Omo. She is online. He told me will be online in Google, and I know he won't um, he won't uh, do otherwise. So, Mr. Gabriel Nam, the Omo branch chairman. I know you are there. You are especially welcome. Uh, we thank the Degeman branch chairman, who is on our way to the other as absent, but as his files to represent us. You are welcome, madam. Thank you so much for coming to chair us all. Mr. Keeper, chairman of the branch, also said in this form. All the chairmen online, we thank you. My sister, um, the chairperson of FIDA was here earlier, but she had to rush for the burial of, of the late Professor Lulu Briggs. We are very happy right now. We would have been able to organize this reception or seminar. We would have been able to organize this reception or seminar without, first of all, the Resilient Planning Committee. They did a good job. And also the support of our sponsors. Our sponsors, I can't mention names. I know some of them are here online. You know, it's a hybrid event. Somebody like uh, the Wilcox Alberta is online. Um, and many others, which is Charity Obwa, is online. We thank them with Top Solutions. We thank them with Alisa Rihanna. We thank them. This is each of them when we came. We thank all of them because. It is the, the backbones that make this possible for us to receive our new weeks. We also thank, uh, we also welcome the MTA crew, rather. We welcome the MTA crew for um, honoring us. They gave us what they are doing for a very little stipend, very little money. We enthusiastically welcome all our resident seniors and respected female lawyers. Good luck all in fact to this historic seminar. It's historic, we always have our quarterly seminar, but this one is historic because we are using, uh, using it as, a, uh, as also an opportunity to welcome our new weeks. Our new weeks are our joy, our pride. It shows that the legal profession is not going to end with us. We have people coming behind 
In time they have, they, people are called to bar. It means we have senior babies. So you are all welcome. Our new weeks, we welcome all of you, especially. We wish above all that after listening to our speakers do justice to this, you will begin to shape more your legal career. Let us listen to our chairperson, Mrs. Chinyere. Let us listen. Okay. Our chairperson, Mrs. Chinyere Okorosha, has been online even before now. She has been online since past nine. And I hope she's a mother. She bore with us all the delays. She didn't take offense. She had, we greet you specially. Thank you. At this point, let us listen to our chairperson. Give us her keynote address from Zoom. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Uh, am I being heard? Let me know if you can hear you can me. Hear me. <laughs> Okay. okay, if you can, if you can hear me, I would like the camera to be turned uh, to show the the new weeks, please. Thank you. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My uh, honourable justices here present senior advocates here present, senior members of the bar. Um, good morning. Fellow council members are here present, our honorable secretary, Mrs. Irene Peppo. Uh, other leaders of the MBA Women's Forum, please permit me to stand on existing protocols and um, Please forgive me if I didn't mention you specially. Thank you to all the distinguished guests who have decided to spend their morning with us. Uh, on behalf of the forum, I also apologize for the late start, which was due to circumstances beyond our control. So I am very delighted uh, with the MBA Women's Forum Rivers Branch, who have decided to hold this very important session to welcome the new weeks to the profession of the law. <laughs> I am particularly delighted because it's not every day that you get to be celebrated at the beginning of your career. And so I think it's very important that as new weeks or new women at the bar, that being celebrated and invited into the profession in this way already puts you ahead of your peers or ahead of the male folks, if I may say. So as was uh, very well introduced by the head of our membership committee, Mrs. Ugochi Agala, the MBA Women's Forum was set up to cater to issues that are important to women or female lawyers. We're all aware of the discrimination that women face in the world today. This was brought into the for, uh, forefront by the introduction of the worldwide or worldly recognized International Women's Day, where we actually come and we discuss issues uh, concerning women and how we can have a better gender equal world. I dare say that the legal profession isn't any different and that there is discrimination at the bar, as you will get to know now that you're part of the system. But with an organization like ours, a forum like ours, which is the Women's Forum, programs that will help us to educate ourselves on how we can overcome those stereotypes, the gender biases, the gender inequalities that we all face, how you can overcome them and still be the best possible lawyer 
that you can be and still rise to the highest um, position in any career or any aspect of the law that you intend uh, to embark upon. You are now all in your youth service. I know many of you are posted to different places. Some of you may have been posted to the ministries, some in the academia, in the universities, and some still, I think, will be doing your youth service as in-house counsel to various corporations, ministries, and all that. Whatever it is, wherever you find yourself as a lawyer, I want you to do your very best. I want you to give it to your, your, your all because the truth of the matter is that there is no shortcut to attaining success in your career. There is no shortcut, I'll say it again, to attaining success in your career. You must work hard. And I dare say the mere fact that you're a woman even makes you, in some cases, have to even work harder than your male counterparts because you will find biases. You will find those that will say that because you're a female lawyer, you can't handle this brief. You'll find those that will say because you are pregnant, they won't employ you as a female lawyer. You will come across those who will say because you're a woman, you can't travel out of the state to go and represent a client or that you are not able to represent a client in, in, in high profile cases also because you're a woman. But ladies, I'm here to tell you that you can still achieve success despite all these limitations. When you look when, at the statistics of those who have become senior associates uh, of Nigeria, you will see that the percentage of women is less than 000, 000 point something percent. I think there are about 400, uh, oh, can I remember the statistics now? But there are very few, there are just about 26 uh, female uh, SANs in Nigeria today. Um, I think about 100 altogether, and only 26 are women. Please don't hold me to those statistics. I recently had the number, but I forget now. That shows you that there is discrimination. But I want you as the newer generation to be the ones that will change these stereotypes, that will change these biases, even at, in, in the legal profession. You have what it takes, because the truth of the matter is that at the end of law school, the same amount of men and women graduate from, from law school. In fact, sometimes the women are more. And when we look at the law school results, you'll find that women, the female lawyers do even better than the men sometimes. But something happens between the time that you leave law school and you enter the workforce, so you will get a job, but then as you go up that career ladder, the women begin to fall by the wayside and you will see that the men are rising up. But I'm here to tell you today that don't let that be your story. You can still achieve any height you want to achieve despite those limitations. Just take a look at those women on the stage today. The women who are going to impart nuggets of wisdom to you today. Do they look like they've been discriminated against? Even if they were, they have been able to rise above it all. And that's what I want your story to be today. That despite the challenges, despite the fact that you're a woman and with uh, sincere apologies to our male <laughs> speaker on the stage, <laughs> if you can hear me, I come in peace. But I want your story to be that you raised, you rose up to the heights that you wanted to rise up to in your career. So I have 10 points because of time. I'm gonna quickly go through the 10 points I want you to note, even as you start on your career. Are you with me? I can't hear anything. So I want to know that you are hearing me 
and that you are with me even as I'm I'm speaking. Can I get uh, some feedback either in the chat because I can see a couple of us are online or in the hall if you could tell me that you are with me and that you can hear me and that you understand what I am saying. Anybody? Yes. You can hear me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So point number one, as a young lawyer entering the workforce, I have talked about hard work. There's no yes. shortcut to anywhere worth going. You can write it down. Ladies, there is no shortcut to anywhere worth going. So please put in the work. Don't be in a hurry. Put in the work, please, I beg you. A lot of young people today want to reap where they have not sown. Let that not be your story. You have to sow. And when you sow that seed, you need to nurture the seed. And nurturing the seed means that you will give it manure. You will give it water. You will give it sunlight before it can germinate. Please be careful. Let us obey the rules of nature. Because when you don't obey the rules of nature, you will grow a defective seed. And that seed will not stand the test of time. My second point is that you have to decide very early where you want to start out your career. I have mentioned various areas where you could practice as a lawyer, either at the bench, in which case you know you want to um, go the judge's route. I'm sure maybe our justice here on the panel uh, will give more insight into what you need to do in order to follow that path. But you have to start, start thinking about it even now in the beginning. Or you want to be at the bar and be a litigator or you want to be a corporate lawyer. Now is the time to decide. Or you want to go into academia, become a lecturer, be a research, research guru. Now is the time, ladies, to start thinking about it so that even at the beginning, you can position yourself properly for the type of lawyer you want to be. You want to be an in-house counsel, in which case, again, the trajectory of your career where you start out will also be different. Or is it the public sector you want to go into or politics? These are all options for you as lawyers. And it's important for you to recognize that all these options, no matter the one you choose, you can excel and you can grow to the very pinnacle of that profession. I also, point number three, or I think it's three, be like a sponge. What did I say? Sponge. You know, a sponge sucks in water. Anywhere you put a sponge, it will suck in a lot of, of, of water and then become larger than life. I want you to be like a sponge and suck in every knowledge you can, even as you're starting out your career. Do different things. If you're in a law firm or a legal practice, work on different areas of the law. If you're in the ministry, ask for different projects that you can do. If you're in the academia, no matter where you find yourself, suck in knowledge because no knowledge is lost. It will make you become a more rounded lawyer. Go for trainings. Always put up your hand when they're looking for someone who can be trained. And in some cases, if you have the resources or you still have your parents backing you, then train yourself. Don't wait for your organization to train you. That can also be a way to go about it. Another point, I think is point number four, is that you need to, even now, build your networks. What did I say? Build your networks. Because networking is what will help you um, to, to, to grow in your career. And when I say your networks, I'm talking about your university friends. Because your university friends, for example, this is just one part of it, are the leaders of tomorrow. As you're growing, they're growing. Those are the people that will become a veritable means of you to elevate either yourself or your organization if you're looking for briefs. Your network is your university 
um, secondary school, friends, your teachers. It can be your church members. It can be family members, whatever it is. Nurture those relationships because a time will come in your career when you will need it and you never know what you, 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 when you will need it. And I say build these networks even before you need it. Always aim to add value to the person you are trying to get something from. Someone reached out to me on LinkedIn recently and was just asking, he needs a job, he needs a job, he needs a job. It's not the way to go. Don't make yourself a pest. So before you want to reap, even if you recognize, if you identify someone you think you can help, that can help you, nurture them. There's no man that will come up to you tomorrow to want to, and he will just see you. Then he says he wants to marry you and you agree. You'll be wondering who is this person? So it is with the relationships that we try to build or the networks we try to build. You have to nurture that relationship before you ask them to help you. It's a two-way relationship. So always aim to add value. I also want to say that these are Generation Z, I think, and Generation X, or, 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 and so on and so forth. The younger folks of who you are amongst, you're always thinking about money. But I'm here to tell you today, it is not always about money. It is not always about money. Please don't let that be your guiding principle in life. You have to sow before you reap. I can't say it loud enough. There's some level of tutelage that is required. You know, learn. Let you be in an air in a, a mindset where you want to suck in knowledge from everybody you can. I've forgotten the number I'm on now, but seek out mentors. Mentorship is very important, even at this stage in, in your career. People, women who have done the things that you would like to do, whether it's a senior lecturer, whether it's a judge, whether it's an in-house counsel, a general counsel of a huge conglomerate, or if it's a woman in politics, seek them out. And I don't mean if that seeking out must be physical. I have mentors, people who are mentoring me from afar. I've never met them, but their life story has had influence on my choices and my career. I follow them on social media. I read any books they have written. I listen to the things they say. I attend programs that they attend. And I look at their life, trajectory, their career trajectory, and indeed their life trajectory. And I emulate the things I like there whilst not losing myself in the process. So please look for mentors. Men can also be mentors because uh, they always have a different perspective from us women, which is also very important and makes us more rounded and more robust and better lawyers. I also want you to uh, recognize that law is a business. What did I say? I said law is a business. Because the legal profession, we're such a proud profession. We always think, even I remember myself in, in, in university, it's like we are a privileged, um, <laughs> a privileged um, profession. And I agree that we are. We feel it's law and then everybody else. And whilst that's okay, it's okay to have the, um, the, um, the chip on our shoulder, so to speak, but remember that in the past, law used to be just about, um, I guess it developed from the litigation aspects before the commercial aspects of law were built. And so when we started out as lawyers, we didn't invite so many of those business principles uh, like marketing and sales. But the world today has changed. The legal profession today has changed. And so apart from having your legal training, there is a need for you to also have business skills that will make you a successful lawyer. For people like me, I've been in the legal profession for 32 years now. I learned the business skills after the fact, but you are in a privileged position where you can start imbibing those principles even early and it will make you a better lawyer. It will make you stand out from the crowd. So think about marketing, um, finance, you understand, uh, personal effectiveness, 
etiquette even, business etiquette, all those soft skills are what are going to stand you out as a lawyer because no merely knowing the law, being good at the law, can no longer be the yardstick for being a, a successful uh, lawyer. I have two more to go. I want you to, as women, recognize the fact that a time will come. If you're not already married, then by God's grace, you will all marry and you will have children. There will be a time in your career when you will have to juggle this work-life balance. And I tell you, it is not an easy matter. But I want you to remember that if I could do it, then you can do it too. If all those women on the stage can do it and all the leaders that we have in the room who are successful female lawyers, if they could do it, you can do it too. You can have a career and still have a loving uh, home, still be a, a, a successful wife and a successful mother. Balance is about choosing the things to focus on at any point in time. And I've yet to see the woman that says that, ah, I have achieved the balance and then they're sitting pretty. Balance is like, you know, a give and a take you know, recognizing that there are many areas of your life that need attention, not just your career. And so giving the required attention when you need to, if you need to ask for help from either a parent, your mom coming to stay with you or uh, employing some staff in the house or leaning on your colleagues or a friendship group of other female professionals, then you do so, but it is doable. <laughs> I am tired of hearing women who left the legal practice uh, because they had children or you leave your career just because you're getting married. That shouldn't be the story of every female lawyer. They say because women don't like going to court, that's why we don't have many, many SAN. But that is not true. So please be careful of this work-life balance, I can't talk too much about it, uh, but I'm sure the ladies here today will give you more examples. I don't want to take too much of your time. The last thing I will say is that you must aim to build a personal brand for yourself as a female lawyer. And that personal brand is basically the impression that people have about you. Are you the person in your organization that they say, once I give it to Nkechi, I know it's done? Or are you going to be that person that they say, please don't give it to Nkechi, she will leave it and she won't do it? What's the impression you're creating about your work ethic, even now as you start out in your career? How are you put together? Are you cantankerous? Are you likable? How do you speak? How do you present yourself? Do you dress well or do you dress inappropriately as a female professional? All these things help you when you're trying to build your, 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 your um, personal brand. It's very important in the 21st century world because you will come ag against challenges. But your aim is to stand out from the crowd. What is it that you can do that will make you be chosen even in the midst of many other female lawyers? Also, the use of technology is very important in the world we find ourselves in today. Anything that um, you can do to try and incorporate the technology into your practice and when I say your practice, I'm talking about you and wherever it is you find yourself. It will help you in the future. And the last point is that your health is your wealth, ladies. There's so many stories of women who have decided uh, to face either their husband, you know, in the village, and they forget to look after themselves. Health is wealth, women. Do your medical checkups. It doesn't matter how young you are. Start early to imbibe the principle of looking after yourself. Eat the right things. Keep away from the things you know for a fact they're not going to be healthy for you. Because many a time, many a women have lost their lives along the, uh, along the way 
because of bad um, health choices. So I'm hoping that with these few words that I have shared today, these few principles that I've shared today, you're going to be able to pick out one or two things that will help you uh, even as you start your career as a female uh, professional and a female lawyer. Uh, before I go, I cannot help but encourage you that if you're not, if you're not, if you're not currently a member of the Nigeria Bar Association Women Forum, then please, I am sure that Ugochi is happy to take your details. That is the head of our membership uh, committee to put down your details and register. It is absolutely free for you from zero to five years at the bar. Membership of the Nigeria Bar Association Women Forum is absolutely free. So I encourage you to join this group of female professionals who will help you, we will mentor you, we will train you, we will give you opportunities uh, to uh, advocate for yourself. You know, we have various associations that we're also in contact with uh, and, and to become a, a part of our community um, will be one of the best decisions you can take for yourself. So I encourage you to join us. And on that note, once again, I want to congratulate uh, the River State Nigeria Bar Association Women's Group for putting together this wonderful, well thought through event. I'm going to be here with you throughout the day. I too, am looking forward to the messages that we're going to hear from the various speakers today. I find the topics very, very interesting and I'm sure I am going to learn along with you some new things because you know you're never too too old to learn something new. So once again, ladies, congratulations! Welcome uh, to MBA Women's Forum, um, and please just go go and register. And uh, I'd like to hand back to you, Glory, or Gloria, uh, and the planning committee. And thank you once again. And we can so, 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 I, I can't actually hear you anymore. If you could, uh, if admin can uh, do something about that, I can't actually hear them speaking anymore. Hey,
Without further ado, um, we'll go right into the discussion for today. Our panelists and um, our keynote speaker be His Worship Dr. Rita Okubo, who is the Deputy Chief Registrar at the of the River State Judiciary and by her right is his worship mr victor wake who will be speaking next as well and um by I his know. right until i get my salary and by her own right is mm -hmm. I will. you're all welcome our distinguished speakers May the round of our I trust that by the end of today's discussion, um, we will definitely achieve the objective of the NBA Women Forum, which is to empower female lawyers for success. So our keynote speaker will have um, 30 minutes to, to speak and also um, for us to ask maybe just one or two questions. And we also have our other speakers as well, who have about 20 minutes as well. Yes, I see that worship is not too comfortable with that, but I trust that he being an expert in ABR, we are able to uh, utilize his time uh, very well. And then um, right after that, to so all in the course of these um, discussions, if you have any questions, please note them down. And once they are all done, we will then be able to um, ask our questions. So, without further ado, may I humbly welcome Dr. Rita Bobo. His Worship Victor Wake, Esquire, Director Multi Mokotal, River State. His Worship Lenu Baridana Pata, Chief Magistrate and Presiding Magistrate of the River State Family Court. Mrs. Chinere Okoja. Okorocha, okay, who is joining virtually, Chairman of MBA Women's Forum, Chairperson, Chairman of MBA Women's Forum, Mrs. Irene Purple Esquire, Secretary, MBA Women's Forum, Dr. O. Osumu. The state lead, MBA Women's Forum, River State. Other executive members of the MBA Women's Forum, River State here in our meeting. Members of the MBA, both those who seated physically and those joining virtually. Our dazzling female new week. You all watch that. Members of the press, good afternoon. It is indeed an honor for me to be asked by the NBA Women's Forum to make this presentation as a keynote speaker. I'll only apologize for a slight mix up. I just came now and I'm seeing another topic attached to the keynote speaker. I was under the impression I was speaking on the tip of the seminar today. Be that as it may, they are all connected. They are all connected. 
So I know my presentation will not be out of place at all. We belong to an ancient, great, and highly honored profession. The practice of law is a calling and a worthy one at that. It has rewarded many with financial success and with prestige and leadership in communities, not to mention in the political arena. The hallowed nobility of the profession stem from entirely at its noble objectives and age-long traditions and principles. However, the world has generally and specifically in this 21st century undergone revolution in every sphere of life and the legal profession is not left out. The law, career and legal profession in Nigeria dates back to the time of the British rule in Nigeria. Hence, the Nigerian legal system owes its formal origin, underline formal origin to the British legal system. At the advent of the career in Nigeria, it was embraced by very few persons who were reputed to be so comfortable that they can sometimes dispense with legal fees. However, this is not the situation now. In fact, it is said that there are too many lawyers now in Nigeria, as the doors to the profession have been flung open, and lots of people can afford to join the profession. Nevertheless, the legal profession is still reputed to be one of the noblest professions in the world. It is on this strength that may belong to be part of this great profession. However, the same goes if horses were wishes beggars will rise. It is not all that wish or even aspire to be part of this new profession that are part of it today. It is on this note, I congratulate everyone here, especially the newbie, for making it into this noble profession. I also congratulate the MBA Women's Forum for this laudable initiative of having reception for newbie via a seminar of this nature. The theme for this seminar is indeed very apt. Legal career in the 21st century, prospects and challenges for the newbie. As Karl Marx once said, the only thing constant in life is change. As the society is changing, so every aspect of the society, including the legal career, is moving along with the wind of change. The legal career is a very old one that spans centuries and found in all nations of the world due to its role in society. A seminar of this nature and timing will in no small measure contribute to the preservation of the noble ethics of this profession. It affords opportunity to new entrants to hear from the older members of the profession who will in turn bequeath the sacred tenets of the profession to the younger one. It indeed breeds a, a gap once more Thank you, MBA Women's School. What are the characteristics of the legal profession? From the earliest emergence of the legal profession, its members were highly revered, trusted, and respected. Socially, members of the profession had prominent positions in the society as they were seen and addressed as learned, even up to date. The aura of the legal profession stemmed from its highly cherished values principles and rules, these put together from the rules of the legal profession. I shall highlight some of these noble and ancient rules. First is the duty to comply with rules of professional conduct. As a new week, it is pertinent for you to know, which although you must have heard during your classes on legal professional ethics, that a legal, profession, a legal practitioner doing his professional trade must do so pursuant to the Legal Practitioner Act 1962 as amended. He must carry out his practice within the ambience of the rules regulating the legal profession. A legal profession practitioner is an officer of the hallowed temple of justice and has an onerous task duty to uphold and observe the well-cherished principle of the rule of law, promote and foster the cause of justice, and maintain a high standard of professional conduct. If you fall short of it, you will appear before the legal practitioner disciplinary committee. So at this point, it's very necessary for you to have that at the back of your mind. 
Then the language and style of the profession. The legal profession has its language, which members must use and not resort to meaningless languages emerging in society. In the case of David Orube, Uche, and another versus Payot, Sabo, and others, reported in 2016, 16 Nigerian Women Law Report, part 1538 at page 264. George Will J. S. J. C. is there, while addressing the issue of improper language in the case in point. He said, so my lords, going through the ruling of 11th August 2015 and the appellate breach, there seems to be, in my view, with due difference to both the lower tribunal and the appellate, appellate council, much use of very intemperate language not in tune with the ethics and dictates of this noble profession of law, to which we all, to which we all, either on the bench or at the bar private doors. The council must, in line with the tenets of the profession, use sober and temperate languages in addressing the court and even the calling at the bar. You don't use foul language at your colleagues, no matter how provoked you are then there is need for decorum and respect for other members of the profession. The profession is built on respect. The tradition in the profession is that respect begets respect. Respect must be accorded to both members of the bar and the page. Members of the profession as counsel, especially both senior ones and the new ones, the new week, should respect one another regardless of motives. The concept of seniority at the bar is highly cherished. Hence, with respect to a colleague at the bar, is tagged with professional misconduct. In fact, in the case of SPDC of Nigeria Limited, again, Chief Isaac Osaro Abara and others reported in 2016, 10 Nigeria Wiki Law Report, part 1496, page 5353. Echo Jason. SC, as he then was, commenting on this aspect of the profession, said, calling the opposing counsel names, smacks of professional misconduct, as well as immaturity on its part. So when you call your colleagues names at the back, they think you have scored the point, but you don't show that you are immature at the back, in addition to the fact that it is a professional misconduct. Then appearance and dressing. This is a challenge to the female members of the bar. This is one dressing at the bar and appearance is one of the reasons for the nobility and command of respect in this profession. The way and manner members of the profession dress and are expected to dress play a great role in the career. For the females, there is hardly any time the bar will meet bar and bench during bar and bench forum that you not hear of female lawyers dressing indecent. In my court, I won't hear you. I had a case where a friend, the sister is my close friend. She was in my office about a week before that day. And she told me she just came in from Lagos. She's practicing, you know, it's fine. And a week thereafter, she appeared in my court. Believe you me, she had a black skirt. Do you know what she was wearing? Oh, you know this jacket? Let me use that night. They call monkey jacket. Waistcoat. She had a camisole and she had a waistcoat. And she appeared. She stood up and said, sorry, I can't hear you. I can't even see you. She was shocked. Knowing that I was her elder sister's friend, but I said I won't see her. She stood there, eyed me, did everything. I said I will not see her, and I didn't hear her. Then I had an instance where somebody appeared wearing a new colored shoe. To court, somebody appeared in the back. Sometimes they appear with seniors, the male, the male counterpart. They are well dressed, but you see the female. Some will wear blouse. Blouses are not allowed. You must put on a jacket on top. You can wear dresses as you are now. You're looking very beautiful. You're good to go. But when you wear a blouse, 
just you spare one small flag and step. You're not good to go. You throw a jacket on top of it. So please, as you're coming in, be aware of this so that you don't get embarrassed. And dressing even goes up to our hair. You're allowed to put on wig, but there are different types of wig. You should put on wig knowing that you're going to appear in court. Going to appear. I remember when I was a new big also. I did this afro. You know, afro, a packing gel. Then you do afro. And I peered it. I put my wig on top of it. So the wig was practically patching on the on the. And before I came, of course, I tried to hit it down very well. And I was convinced that I was good to go. And I appeared before Rebel Justice. Coincidentally, she just retired two years ago as CD. And she was like, what is that on your head? I thought something was on my head. And I was touching, thinking maybe she was, what is that on your head? Another lawyer, I'm like, is your hair your head? I said, I'm sorry. I started pushing it down. And she told me she would not hear me. And I left my lesson. So I'm telling you now so that you don't learn that lesson too. I learned my lesson. Till then, packing gel by especially Afro packing gel, no way. Because you never can tell when you have to appear and you need to put on your wig. So please be very conscious of yourself. Some persons wear very short mini skirts to cut. Then you see that you're struggling to cover up yourself. No. It's not the dressing of the legal profession. In fact, when you dress very well, there's this confidence in you. There's this confidence. You look very executive and you can look anybody in the eyes and talk. So please remember that, that your dressing gives you that added confidence to appear before any judge or magistrate in any court. Then, as part of the ethics, we should also know that a council is primarily an officer in the temple of justice and must therefore at all times maintain fidelity in the discharge of his duties. This calls for high level of honesty and integrity. It is said that to who much is given, much is expected. Your client, you go between your client and the world. Money is meant for your client to be released to you. Please don't touch it. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's agreed to take some percentage. You can have it, but give the client his money. Then while in court, you know that your client is lying. You're adding it. You're even embellishing the lie for the, the client. He doesn't tell well of you because the court may be sitting there. He knows you're lying. And in his or her mind, just shaking his eyes, he's got that his head is pulling his or herself. So please be mindful of that. Now, the above are what ought to be in the legal profession and what has been from time immemorial. The question now is how is the legal profession or legal career in the 21st century? The role of a lawyer in the 21st century can be said to have expanded and expounded. It has been taxed, challenged, and overly stretched beyond its earlier expectation. According to American Bar Association's model rules, a lawyer is to be a representative of clerks, an officer of the legal system. And in this 21st century, Lawyers are expected not only to represent clients and the officers of law, but be able to proffer global solutions to issues that affect not just your client, but the world at large. In society, the world reposes so much confidence in the lawyer that they expect you to give them solutions to some of the pressing issues arising. The challenges of the 21st century Outside include but are not limited to technological advancement, which is leading to cyber crime and theft of intellectual property, media, environmental issues like climate change, global warming, pollution, 
There's health issue of diseases, abnormalities, and all the rest, including what you just witnessed some not years, months ago. That is the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a challenge and it's a new area that the law is yet to come up with solutions to. The world of work has changed. Almost all jobs and careers have experienced a shift or change, even in the most insignificant way. And the legal profession is no exception. The prospect of more changes to come as the century progresses are still obvious and staring us on the face. It is an elementary fact that law is an instrument for social engineering. And with the awareness of the evolutions taking place in our society, there is need for diversification in the legal career and the, and the advancement of the economic and social well-being of its members to meet public expectations. Late President Kenneth Kauda of Zambia once described the role of lawyers in an emerging society as follows. The lawyer in a developing society must be something more than a practicing professional man. He must be more even than a champion of fundamental rights and freedom of the individual. He must be in the fullest sense, a part of the society in which he lives and understand that society, if he is to be able to participate in its development. In a nutshell, a person who has chosen the legal career must be dynamic following the dynamics of the society. What are the prospects of legal career in the 21st century? There are great prospects for the legal career, especially the new wits in this 21st century. The 21st century carries with it a whole lot of novel areas and issues which can be harnessed as opportunities for the legal profession. The century has opened up new frontiers which has in turn created a lot of other openings in the legal career. Some of these areas include telecommunication, ICT, aviation, banking and finance, admiralty, capital market, oil and gas sector, tax, alternative dispute resolution, cyber crime, and a whole lot of others. Let me just dwell on just two of them. One is ICT. The world is now a global village. Knowledge of ICT makes one a gold mine now in the legal career. For instance, before this time, the River State Judiciary, in the River State Judiciary, cases and court processes could only be filed manually. This requires you to go to the registry where you are if you need to file your process. However, for about four years now, the River State Judiciary has commenced full online filing of processes. I must say that the older members of the bar are not finding it easy to adapt. Most of them now rely on young lawyers to file their processes. In this situation, the new we conversant and versatile in ICT becomes a highly sought after lawyer. Most average Nigerians now have their cell phone linked to the internet and can therefore have access to the whole world. Location is therefore no longer a barrier. A new week can with his cell phone or other device create a job for himself and also carry out his practice from the comfort of his home. These are things that the older lawyers may not be able to. Then diversification. Legal career and practice in this 21st century is no longer the stereotype practice of only the usual criminal and civil matters. Now, areas of practice have opened, new areas of practice have opened up, and new sets of opportunities have emerged. With a learning or research, with a little learning or research, a young week can venture into areas like cyber crime rather than the mundane cases like stealing and murder. Even alternative dispute resolution is gaining so much ground now and giving courtroom lawyers a run for their money. A new we can harness this new frontier and establish himself there. As a legal practitioner in this 21st century, one may ask, how equipped are you to take up a career in the legal profession? The 21st century legal practitioner needs to constantly update his skills to keep up with the changes in society. 
this puts one on the map of the world and gives one an edge over other colleagues. Now, what are the challenges of the new week? Truly, every profession present, presents its own challenges and the legal career is no exception. The privilege certainly carries with it a corresponding responsibility. Here lies some of the legal, the challenges of legal career for a new week. The first and obvious challenge of a new week is the problem of too many seniors already in the race. It is a fact that every year hundreds of lawyers are churned out of the law school. And as the years go by, the names of those on the road as legal practitioners keep increasing. The number of seniors keep multiplying. This seems to be a threat to the new we who feel the entire arena has been taken up. In the courtrooms, the seniors call their matters first, and sometimes before it gets to the turn of the younger one, the presiding judge or magistrate may be ready to rise. Also linked to this challenge is the fact that the older lawyer seems to have made a name for themselves already, leaving the younger ones to scout for little briefs. Indeed, these are genuine challenges, which, however, with time can be overcome. Even the senior ones were once junior lawyers. Another challenge is the attitude of new weeks. It is usually dreamy, positive, idealistic, and energetic. Dreamy. They are just my one side before the lawyer. My first week, they paid me like 200,000. I'll use like 50 to save the other one. They pay me again next month. Within four months, I'll just buy a small car. Dreamy. <laughs> this sometimes makes the new we want to immediately be on his own without a requisite to late with a senior. After all, I made two one in school. I read very well. There is no need to join all these old lawyers. They will just take all the money and give you small, small things. The importance of tutelage in the legal career cannot be emphasized. It is a period when the legal milk teeth is used and falls off later. You must use that your legal milk teeth. This is so because the education received at the university and law school cannot prepare one fully for the real world of legal practice. In fact, the real practice is different from what was taught. Then the need to be attached to a senior before moving on. As a young lawyer fresh out of law school, it is very important that one keeps an open mind and clothe himself with an attitude of patience and endurance. Every senior lawyer at SAN you see today, and even at men, they were once in your shoes. They were once confused. They were once filled with curiosity. The difference is that they kept a positive mindset and allowed themselves to be carefully nurtured. And just like every well-nurtured seed planted on a fertile soil, they blossomed and became outstanding in their chosen area of legal practice. Law is a jealous profession. It requires a lot of commitment it is also very rewarding, as it is indeed a great way to serve humanity. Joseph Story, an American lawyer and jurist, once said, the law is a jealous mistress and requires long and constant courtship. It is not to be won by trivial favors, but by lavish homage. As a new week, you find yourself in a new faith, aiming to kickstart a law career there is need to listen, watch, learn, and seriously study how the law firm works. You must watch closely and observe things and people around you. You need a good communication skill also. Understand your priorities and dress the part you are to play. As a new week, it is imperative that you dress conservatively and professionally. The law profession is a very conservative profession, and you must dress to look the part. Be brief and clear. Be brief 
and have clear expectations. As a 21st century lawyer, it is important to understand that a mind that is stretched by new experiences can never go back to its old dimension. I therefore employ you all to always keep an open mind and adopt an attitude of patience as you aim to grow, grow and flourish in your chosen career. To excel in legal practice in this 21st century, a legal practitioner must be equipped with certain skills to qualify to address the predominantly global issues and create value in the world we live. Such skills include, but not limited to, research ability. You should be able to research. The internet is filled with everything you want to do. Research, time management. When you are in an office, you spend, you can spend two hours pinging on your phone without knowing that you have spent two hours. But putting that to work with reading a file and reading one or two things, gain more. Then there must be people skill, know how to talk to people. Even if you, 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 you know you don't know how to talk to people, just start pretending gradually to be part of you. Because you see lawyers, they come to court, somebody is sitting, they want to say, I beg, wait. Please shift, or somebody tells you, please adjust, let me sit down. Sir, now this place is not big. No, learn how to talk to people. Or you stand up to address the court. You start accusing the court. See, let me tell you, sometimes all my straight and judges who can make mistakes, but we don't expect you to look us in the face and tell us that you did this. You're in trouble. They will save you at the back of one part of their mind. This Atige mind, don't worry, I'll give it to you when the time comes. And you're destroying your clerk's face. But you can politely tell a judge or magistrate that you don't agree with him or her. In a very polite way, you can make your case. I don't agree, sorry, I don't think this is right. But when I say, it's not true, it can't be. This is it, oh. So you have to mind your attitude or know how to discuss, develop that people's skill. Then you have a strong communication skill, the same thing. Some people know the law, but they can't communicate it. It's a problem. You have a good case, but you can't communicate it. A young lawyer appeared in my course, she was doing cross examination. She was, the area she was going to, I was like, very well. But you know, suddenly she just stopped. When she was about hitting the men, she just stopped. I can't tell her, sorry, continue. She has stopped. She has ended her conversation. And of course, that would affect her case. So you have to be careful. Then there is creativity. You can also be creative. Media literacy. You should be able to be internet literate. Now, even if you apply to be registrar, wherever, they test you with ICT. So you have to develop your ICT skill. It is on the basis of the foregoing that one wonders if a new entry into the profession is ready for the prospect and challenges knocking in the legal career in this 21st century. Let me leave us all with the evergreen words of the poem, A Psalm of Life, composed by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, an American poet. He said, the height by great men, wish and kept, were not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. Greatness is a virtue, admired and cherished by many, but attained and preserved by a few. For only the daring can do what it takes to be truly great. Do you want to be great? You have to be daring. Go for what you want, and you will certainly achieve greatness. It is on this premise that I encourage the new week and say to them, your destiny is in your hands. According to Maya Angelo, a great American tourist, nothing can dim the light which shines from within. It means, therefore, that the decision and the ability to excel in this your chosen profession, that is the legal career, lies in your hands. 
many of very senior legal practitioners who are excelling in the various facets of the profession started just like you, including myself and all others. It will only take your industry, commitment, and being focused. And I assure you that in this 21st century, with its diverse opportunity, the sky is definitely your starting point. Once more, I thank the organizers of this seminar and I thank all the resource persons whom I know will greatly enrich us all. Looking at the names of the resource persons that those seated with me there, they are very experienced and I'm sure if we listen, we'll benefit immensely from their wealth of experience. I thank you all for coming. I wish the new week good luck in the career. God bless us all. Thank you very much, Your Worship Dr. Rita, for our keynote speaker for today. Thank you. And I'm sure that in the course of the um, seminar discussions with our other speakers as well, and even the questions that will come forth from the um, new weeks, we would have a robust um, discussion on all of these areas. And then at this juncture, I will hand over the microphone to His Worship, Mr. Victor Winky, to speak. Once again, please um, note down your questions and we'll take them for Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank the organizers of this program for inviting me to speak on the topic. I believe I will also have 30 minutes like my uh, my colleague, the lecture of the keynote address was very, very impressive. The title of my presentation is Building a Formidable Legal Career Through Alternative Dispute Distribution. Uh, my introduction goes as follows. Thank you to have this on the screen. The theme for the River State Group of the Nigerian Bar Association Women for MBE AWF 2023 Receptions to Seminar, which is the legal career in the 21st century. Prospects and challenges for the new weeks is apt because it prepares the minds of the young lawyers who are being honored today to actually understand what is expected of them in legal practice. I am delighted to have been invited to speak on the topic. To be formidable is to be very powerful or impressive. And I have my citation at the end of this. MBA Women Forum wants to show the parts of the, to the young lawyers so that their career can be impressive, impactful, and powerful. It is an indisputable fact that the legal profession is a career because there are restrictions to its entry, that's called to bar, and even greater restrictions to the confinement of the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria, this thing, and the elevation to the bench. There is also a procedure to strike out from the role the name of a legal practitioner who has committed a professional misconduct. Legal practitioner. Of course, if you go to section 24 of the legal practitioner act, the word legal practitioner is defined. I need not bore you with that, so you can read it up on your own. 
Now, I come to bar with enrollment at the Supreme Court of Nigeria as a barrister and solicitor is the symbol of admission into the legal profession. Section 4 of the Coordinator Act provides in detail the requirements for the call to the Nigeria bar. One important right we are given as a lawyer is the right to represent other persons in court. In so far, there is no conflict of interest. And I cited the case of Fawemi um, and MPA number two, citation fully supplied. It is important to note that the legal practitioner owes the higher duty to the court. The last speaker mentioned it, and I want to emphasize that you have to be very, very careful uh, when you are addressing the court. Know the mood of that very court. It is equally important to state that it is the duty of a lawyer to inform his client of the various ADR mechanisms before resorting to litigation. The duty is contained in Rule 15, Supreme D of the Rules of Professional Conduct for Legal Practitioners. So it's a duty you have to inform your client that uh, there is ADR and there are mechanisms other than litigation. So litigation should be the last resort and not the first. It is not sufficient to be called to the bar. What happens after the call? The number of lawyers in Nigeria is on the rise after every call. This, in a way, makes the practice of law highly competitive, almost survival of the fittest. How do you become a powerful or at least impactful or at least impactful in your
There are cases that must go through litigation. I've been issued. What current, what modern ADL does is to in, encourage, is to assist litigation, especially through the multi law quarters, as we shall learn presently. Now, what are the advantages of ADR? There are some advantages of ADR over litigation. ADR offers speedy justice, gives opportunity for less, gives opportunity for less financial expenses, protects the privacy of parties, and ensures their confidentiality, guarantees amicable resolution, and accurate to satisfactory justice, and preserves predictable relationships among others. Prior to this period, ADR mechanisms were simply an alternative to litigation. But with the emergence of the multi-door courthouse, MDC, a court-connected ADR center developed from the comprehensive justice system theory of Professor Cassandra, Professor Frank Sander in 1976. ADR mechanisms are now applied either as complementary or supplementary mechanisms to litigation. The point is that the practice of ADR through the multi-door courthouse ensure that every outcome of ADR is transmitted to the court for judgment or final order. For a demonstration of how ADR functions in our MDC in the context of this lecture, we shall adopt the closest MDC to us, the River State multi door Courthouse, as a case study. And you have to listen carefully because as you begin to practice, the multi-door courthouse is an institution within the judiciary. We need to understand how it functions. River State Multi-Door Courthouse, RSNBC. The River State Multi-Door Courthouse is a court-connected ADR center established pursuant to section one of the River State Multi-Door Courthouse law. law. The full citation supplied. RSNBC was inaugurated. The RSMD was inaugurated to the river through the efforts of the President of Justice Simeon Chibuza Mandi on 14th October 2021. Inauguration was conducted by the Governor of River State, His Excellency Chief Nyeson as a one weekend CON DSSRS live venture. RSMD serves as the focal point of ADR practice in River State. See section 21A of the RSMD's law super. RSMD applies the major forms of ADR mechanisms in resolving disputes between parties. In particular, RSMDC applies mediation, reconciliation, arbitration, mutual evaluation, see section 3A of the RSMDC law. The successful outcome of a mediation, reconciliation process is called settlement agreement on terms of settlement, which the court adopts as consent judgment, while the outcome of an arbitration process is called an award a form of decision, which is usually recognized and enforced by the court. The essence of the recognition is to ensure that that matter or dispute is not, you know, re-arbitrated. And of course, the order for enforcement is that it will be enforced just by the judgment of the court. The outcome of a neutral evaluation is a non-binding opinion, which parties are at liberty to comply with, to resolve their disputes or ignore. This is one ADR area that not many people are in. In fact, in River State now, I do not think there's, um, apart from those of us in the multi door quarters, and yet to see somebody who has registered as a neutral in this area. We call it neutral evaluation. A neutral evaluation, the neutral evaluator evaluates the entire case and is able to give a non binding opinion to the parties. It gives an assessment of that case because we want to avoid, you know, this play to the gallery in the court, courtroom. Some matters are in court, but they are frivolous only on the last date when judgment will be what given is a waste of resources, financial resources, and the judicial time of the court. So through early neutral evaluation, you can know that you don't have a case. There is no point dabbling into what is irrelevant. But it is up to that party to take it. 
He may ignore it, but he is parrying. RSM needs to receive matters through one referrals from courts, state or federal, government agencies, private bodies, and persons. Two, working that is filing cases directly at RSMDC. And three, direct intervention by the RSMDC. See section three, A, and, 20, and 21, two A and B of the RSMDC law. It is pertinent to note that the use of the mechanisms at the RSMDC guarantees all the advantages of ADR to the user. I think I have sufficiently introduced my topic. I now go to the main part. What will make you formidable? I can only give hints because this area is inexhaustible. Hints on, a, on how a lawyer may leverage on ADR to arrest to make to make his legal career formidable. We didn't give paper to the, to the previous. I hope you are not. Uh, we should be gender friendly now. Huh? You know, I'm the only male uh, presenter. So please, I seek your protection. Huh? Okay, having said that, now you can gain from ADR to RSMDC as a lawyer with your an ADR training. And I want all lawyers to listen. It's not just for the new weeks, but it's all for all of us. You can do that through bidding. Bidding of claims with an option of ADR. Based on the provisions of Rule 15 sub 3D of the Rules of Professional Conduct, Supra, a smart lawyer will carefully isolate matters which, by their nature, can be resolved through ADR, inform his clients, and apply ADR for their resolutions in order to arrive at accurate, so satisfactory, and speedy justice. So you, you have to screen your matters, screen the matters that come to you. Don't just carry all the matters to go and file in court. It's a bad way of practicing law. Like I have hinted here, any matter that can be negotiated, whose dispute can be negotiated, is amenable for what? ADR. It's amenable to ADR. And I have listed some matters that you should not take to ADR. Any matter that has to do with emergency, like giving an injunction, do not bring it to the multi-door world, court house. Any matter relating to dissolution of marriage, it needs a decree of a court, the order of a court. But matters incidental to dissolution of marriage, like settlement of property, maintenance, and custody, those ones we can bring to us, we can settle those ones. Then when you now get to the court, you will have to file uh, the settlement agreement. The judge will only take evidence on the dissolution of the marriage itself. But when it comes to when it comes to making judgment orders with respect to these incidental matters, he will adopt what you had already settled at the multi-door courthouse. Now, the benefit of Timeo's application of ADR is that the stage of evidence in the matters may be avoided, thereby saving considerable time and financial resources for both parties and their lawyers. It will also save the judicial time of the court. The fact is that a lawyer who bills his client with an optional ADR mechanism may have quick turnover of matter and of course, legal fees above other lawyers who do not apply ADR. Now, retaining of life clientele. The findings of a research conducted on the most compelling factor which motivates parties to choose ADR instead of litigation is conservation of time. The research showed that parties are always willing to let go part of their rights in order to save time to do other things equally important to them. The truth is that most parties detest being in court for a long time and they are already complaining. Therefore, if parties discover that a particular lawyer has a speedy way of leading them to resolve their matters on time, such parties will not only prefer the lawyer to the other lawyers, but may also recommend such lawyer to their business associates and loved ones. Three, assisting parties to obtain judgment by the use of memorandum of understanding. And I want you to listen carefully. A lawyer who understands the operations of the RSMDC may provide his client the service of filing his client's memorandum of understanding, MOU, with another party for endorsement as consent judgment. 
A combined reading of section 17, sub 5, 4, sub 3, and B of the RSM this law is to the effect that the Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, filed and registered at the RSMDC may be endorsed as consent judgment by an ADR judge or any other judge disputed by the chief judge. The lawyer who is aware of this legal reform through the RSMDC law and uses it will certainly make a difference in practice. He will save parties from avoidable litigation in the future due to occasional careless breach of terms of memorandum of understanding in Nigeria. Four, acting as a legal representative in ADR sessions. A lawyer with that an ADR training may still represent the client in an ADR session and play the role of a counsel. By so doing, the lawyer will protect the interest of his client, earn appearance fees, learn more about ADR, and generally assist the entire ADR process. It is shocking to note that some lawyers abandon their clients whenever their clients' matters are referred to the River State Mortal Court House by the court, only to rejoin them in the court when the ADR process is over. By such ugly attitude, some lawyers lose their appearance fees, which they would have aimed at the arrest MDC. These lawyers forget that the arrest MDC is a courthouse and so still part of the court system from where active private legal practitioners are supposed to end. You see, ignorance is very, very expensive. I have been looking at lawyers. I don't stay at the balcony and look at lawyers. They just meander around. They lose a lot of fees because they do not understand what to do. But today, you have learned the secret. Please, when your matters are referred to the multi-door courthouse, do what? Come to the multi-door courthouse any session that we hold, you will be there and you will call, collect appearance fees just like you collect what? Normal court what? Appearance, appearances. Now, acting um, lawyers who also avoid the ADR process lose capacity building in ADR from the experience there and the role they would have played as a contribution to the entire dispute resolution process. Section 9 of the RSM this law provides the role of lawyers with regard to the RSMDC doors. So you can read that up. It is there in our RSMDC law. If you come to the center, I can give you, I can avail you with the photocopy. Now section nine of the RSMDC law truly provides the duties of a council and every lawyer who performs them must certainly gain and also assist in creating more access to justice to the RSMDC. As a lawyer with an ADR training, if you have, if you're a lawyer with an ADR training, you can you can leverage on on ADR and arrest them this in the following ways. One, aiming as a neutral or ADR expert in ADR centers. A lawyer with an ADR training may register as a neutral with the RSM in his area or areas of specialization, so that he can be appointed for a fee to assist RSM to, to resolve disputes. At present, there are Persons, lawyers, and non lawyers who have registered with the RSM as mediators and or arbitrators, and some have already started any session fees from the RSM as neutrals. LDR is a wide movement that is, that is why some of the lawyers may not even notice that their colleagues are already ending as neutrals. The lawyer trained in ADR who is listed as a neutral at the RSM may equally register with the other multiple courthouses and also enlist as a neutral in private ADR centers within and outside Nigeria. So we are not just limited to the River State Multiple Courthouse. If you train as a neutral, you can register with the Lagos Multiple Courthouse and other multiple courthouses in the country. And because maybe you have an area of specialization, it may invite you from time to time to assist them in resolving some disputes and pay you handsomely. You can also aim from adult ADR. This one is some, uh, uh, the parties can just appoint you and you set up the ADR process. You manage it, both the administration and the operations. Take for instance, you, you is, uh, an arbitration session. You can manage it and then at the end of the day, you will have your award, you write, you write your award and then publish the award to the parties so that 
the winning party can go to court for recognition and what enforcement. When once you render your award, that is the end of that ADR award session. So now you can enhance something from that too. Aiming as an in-house neutral, an ADR expert who registers with the multiple courthouse or an ADR center, and he is only invited upon appointment for a particular case, is called an external neutral. An internal or in-house neutral is an ADR expert in the employment of the ADR center, a company, corporation, etc. RSM risk is already sensitizing employers of labor to employ ADR experts to assist them manage their digital system design. Yes. The reason is that in every establishment, there should be an ADR officer, the way a legal officer, an accountant, or a business development officer is employed. So you have a vast place, a vast opportunity to explore, especially as new weeks. If you train as an ADR expert and you want to work in a company, you see, you have, you have two things in your hands. One is the certificate as a lawyer, and then the other one as what? As an ADR what? expert. So you'll be in high demand. And like we are trying to advocate, every company is supposed to have an ADR officer. As long as you have an accountant, then you should have an ADR officer. I want to reveal this secret to you. In River State now, we do not have many ADR experts. Yes. At the River State Multicultural Courthouse, at least the ones who have registered, we do not have more than 30 arbitrators. And some of them are just associates. For mediators, they are in that neighborhood. They are even less. And so now that we are making this um, advocacy, very soon companies will begin to ask for lawyers who are also trained as ADR world persons. And so if you train, you will be, you know, ahead of others. That's the point we are trying to make. Now, aiding as an ADR trainer, for every ADR training institution, there is a certificate training program called Training of Trainers, TOT. It is a program which equips an ADR expert with the necessary pedagogical skills to train prospective candidates for an ADR induction program. Therefore, a lawyer with an ADR training may offer his or offer this course and earn from training others. Some lawyers who are ADR experts simply attend court and concentrate on ADR training. Some people say that ADR training is expensive. Do you buy that view? Eh? Yes, I know it's expensive because for you to train this as a, as a mediator now, maybe at, at the level of associate, you need like 150,000 naira. If you are trained as a full member, like 400 to 500,000, if you have been trained as a fellow, it's about 750,000 naira. If it is eight person, and if you go to arbitration, it's even very hard. Listen, that which is tough is real. And just as Abraham Lincoln said, if you say education is expensive, then try what? Ignorance. So that is it. So you can. You can do your TOT and just concentrate on training others and make a lot of money. Five, any true research and book writing, the volume of literature on ADR by Nigerian authors is scanty. This is because ADR is still an emerging area of study and practice in Nigeria. Therefore, there is ample opportunity for a brilliant lawyer, well knowledgeable in ADR, to launch out successfully into the ADR space through research and book writing and more. Six, any through collaboration with peace building institutions. A knowledgeable lawyer with an ADR training may easily spot out organizations, local and international, engaged in peace building work, 
and collaborate with them. Those trained in mediation may be at an advantage because of the real mediation plays in peacemaking and generally in peace building in warring communities and countries. Mediation is an essential tool in international short diplomacy. Educated women are needed in peace building because women are considered the greatest victims in violent conflicts at the post-conflict stage. Seven, improvement of goodwill arise to eminence. A lawyer trained in APR has what it takes to easily improve his goodwill and rise to eminence in the environment he operates, be it religious, family, association, etc. This is because he will be in high demand due to his versatility and result-oriented services. Certainly, people who may not need his litigation skills may be desperately in need of his ADR skills. Over time, such lawyer will endear himself to the hearts of many. My conclusion. I will conclude with the words of Thomas Decker. Quote, walk a pace, a pace, a pace, a pace. Honest level bears a lovely face. Unquote. If you explore the opportunities at the RSM as a lawyer, Train and practice as a neutral. Over time, when you look back, you will smile at your formidability in legal practice through ADR. This is in accordance with the Holy Scriptures, which tells us that as long as there is day and night, if we sow, we must reap. And I cited Genesis 26, verse 12. We are Isaac, despite all odds kept sowing. And the Bible says that he reaped when the time came. Therefore, look and walk towards Asia and you shall succeed beyond measures as a lawyer. Before I say, before I say, before I drop the microphone, let me also plead with us. Asia is not a fancy flight. You have to work very hard. It is not a casual area, as some lawyers think. It is a very serious area. To so work hard, but I can assure you that if you work hard for like five years, you will reap the benefits immensely. Thanks and God bless. Thank you very much, Rosh. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I truly, I truly have gained a lot. And it's interesting to see that even in exploring or discussing this um, frontier of uh, dispute resolution and various frontiers, that there are, there, there are even opportunities, you know, in this area. So it, um, Zoshi even talked, talked about, about training of trainers, research and book writing, I'm sure that even that may not have even crossed our minds when we think of uh, the River State Multidor Court House or ADR. So it's really wonderful. And the last statement he said, which is, if we sow, we will reap. So it is essentially pertinent that we as lawyers and, and, and the new weeks as well, that we really, really sow richly so that we will reap richly. And um, um, Going on now to the third seminar, uh, may I humbly invite His Worship Dr. Mrs. Lenu Baridam Apapa for her, and she'll be speaking on female lawyer, worthy in character and dress code. Once again, please send in your questions. Some questions are already here, and then they'll answer all of that. Thank you. You wanted to dash me, Doctor. I'm just taking it. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. I've been asked to speak to my paper because we don't have much time. I'll try and do that. And um, before I do that, let me thank Dr. Glory and everyone who invited me here today. I told her that if it wasn't her, I wouldn't have come because I'm not an outing person. I prefer the comfort of my house and when I have to go to work. So there are three major things we have to talk about. From, if you look at the program, 
My topic is female lawyer, but originally it was supposed to be the 21st century female lawyer. And I think we should still add that because there are important skills that a 21st century female lawyer has to have. And if you remove that from the female lawyer, you become just an ordinary person on the street. So I'll just take the three that, um, what, what did I say here? That I said without the 21st century female uh, skills, the female lawyer cannot be relevant in the pursuit of her career. What are those 21st century uh, skills? Learning skills, literary skills, information, technology, like life skills, you have to have those skills. Without them, you can't do anything. I know I was asking my friend and colleague, Mrs. Beppo, I was asking her when were we called to the bar, that was about 20, she said 22 years ago. So it's really been long. In that time, we didn't have Facebook. I was there Facebook. I don't know if there was Twitter. I was there Twitter. There was no Twitter, there was nothing. So we didn't have to struggle with 21st century skills, media, technology, literacy. For you are in the 21st century, so you have more things to achieve. I know when I was writing this paper, my husband was yapping me, oh, there you're writing on 21st century skills and you're coming with paper. I said, if I see <laughs> others coming with PowerPoint, then I'll pull out my PowerPoint. But fortunately, everybody came with paper, so I'm covered. So, and the other topic is worthy in character. And then and the other speaker said that a, a lawyer has been referred to as a minister in the temple of justice. So if you know that, uh, the, let me just say that in, in one of the cases uh, in the Free Enterprises Nigeria Legal Services Global Transport, the, the court said that an advocate is a minister of justice equally with the judge. He owes an allegiance to a higher cause. It's the cause of truth and justice. The code which requires the barrister to do all this is not good. Uh, this is a code of honor. So I'm referring to a new week. You have you go on and you say, Oh, that lawyer is appearing in this matter with me. How I wish someone else would go. Why? Because your loan to speech is terrible. They won't want to associate with you. So I said that a good starting point to assess your character is to go through the rules of professional conduct for legal practitioners. And I was 2007, and I wanted to encourage that every one of us should have a copy of it and go through it. There are some sections there. I refer to section 26, section 27, 36. It says the lawyer should treat others with respect. The lawyer should observe good faith when you're dealing with others. The lawyer should, add, when you're in the court, you should address your objections with good faith with you. You should not ex exchange in, engage in the exchange of banter, personality display, arguments of controversy with the opposing lawyer. When I was in Port Harcourt, there are sometimes when you come to court, you see two female lawyers standing up, ah, your uh, worship, I'm the one appearing for this person. So I say, ah, I'm the one appearing. You tell them that, please, counsel. You are not supposed to air your dirty laundry in the courtroom. This is not where you haggle over things. You have it over who has paid you and who was not paid. We do that behind the scenes. Don't air your laundry for people to see. We turn criminals to celebrities because you're chasing after them. I'm the one representing him for a little amount. So our character should be um, good. Then I said that um, character is inbuilt. In no set of rules can give you your character. If you are if you are not uh, brought up with good character, it's not too late to learn. As a newbie, and you know you are the hot-tempered type that will go and shout on a judge and automatically spoil your client's case, then go back and work on yourself. Then I said, what in dress? I said, when we refer to dress code, let's look at rule 36 of the same rules of professional conduct. And it said that the lawyer should be attired in proper and dignified manner, shall not wear any apparel or ornament calculated to attract attention to him or herself. But still have all the that happens because sometimes I see lawyers that we see face to face, her nails were so to her. But after a while, I just had to counsel. You can do your nails. 
But at least that is a movie. So, uh, as the queen of the coast or something. You should be modest. That's what the law says. You should be modest. I know I tried a lot of outfits before I came out of it. And I remember when I was a junior, my uh, principal used to tell us one statement. She tell you, fake it to make it. You have to fake it to make it. That's like, how much are they paying us? 12,000 naira. We'll be complaining. Is it 12,000 naira we we'll use and go and buy a gown or buy shoes? But you can be neat with a little money. Just get a simple black gown. It does not have to be, you don't have to wear a coat. As far as though, if you are wearing a superior coat, wear, this, wear your jacket, wear your wig, and you're good to go. Pack your hair properly. When you used to go to conferences in um, Nigerian law school, judiciary, they say, pack your hair. But some of these days, as the first speaker said, you come with Afro, and then on top of the Afro, you still wear wig. So that's the decent. Then I said that. Um, in conclusion, that you must remember not to dress to draw attention to yourself. If you draw, if you dress to draw attention to yourself, definitely you will get the attention you're looking for. So it may not be the type of attention you want. So dress modestly. Don't wear. I, I chose the earring I would wear because I know sometimes you wear those biggest loops. You can wear those ones when you're going to a party. But let me uh, add a note of money. There was a particular in, um, something I saw on WhatsApp. I don't know if that information is true, that the girl had been debarred. She was on Facebook or WhatsApp smoking, wearing, um, oh, she was indecently dressed. That's all I can say. So the question is, should a lawyer be properly dressed in court? Then when you leave court, you throw away all you've been taught and dress as you are. My closing statement is that we all know that they say you are dressed or you are addressed the way you are dressed. If I see you looking corporate, neat people together, well, as you may not have a cobo in your pocket, but the way you dress, people say, ah, this one has money in her account. So it may not be true, but you're only dress the part you want to be addressed. And I said, I, li I listen to some people that, some 21st century female lawyers. I said, Michelle Obama. She's a lawyer who's body in character. Who do you want to be like her? First lady of the US, former first lady. And I remember Chief Mrs. Kolake Sholake. Isn't she a, a formidable, formidable first century female lawyer? Then I remember our own Honorable Justice Mary Odili. She's been a judge, a wife, a mother, everything you can think about. Her. And she's been, I've not seen her dressed or speaking anyhow. And that's how I want to. Um, advise all of us that we, this is when we set the footsteps, we set the, the steps of what we want to be in the law and in our life. Thank you. Thank you. It's so interesting to see that as a 21st century lawyer, you're not only concerned about your physical presence, but also your digital presence. We see that that's something that um, lawyers in the past may not have had to worry about. And, and that absolutely relates to our court speaker's discussion, which is digital law practice, the place of a new week. Um, one welcome to Mrs. Irene Pepper, General. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, our panel, please bless a round of applause for them. They've done great. At some point, I was wondering if this was a law school you know, seminar, and, but I really gleaned so much. The truth is, you're never too old to learn what they just spoke about today. You need to update yourself every day. Sometimes you forget even the things you've learned earlier and you slip up. But when we hear things like this, we do better. So today I'm here to talk on digital law practice, the place of a new lawyer. We're going to make this very interactive. So don't just fool yourself like, okay, she's good to come on, you're giving us, you know. We're going to do it together. So I want to ask someone here, what is digital law practice? Or what do you think is 
Can someone help me? New weeks. I was God a long time ago, so I need you. Anyone? Thank you, please. Thank you. No, you can You can just keep going. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Porridge. So, um, before I define, let me give an answer. Digital you know practice can be seen, for example, where previous um, lawyers who are doing research for a matter of case have to go to a library to look for law reports and skim through so many law reports to find one single case that will support a certain position they wanted to advocate on or can back the court. Now, in the digital age, we don't have to do that. All I have to do is subscribe to the Nigerian Free Law Report online and just put the principle I'm looking for and in 100 cases will pop up and show me what I'm looking for. So digital law practice. So digital law practice just simply means the involvement of technology, information technology in the research, advocacy, and general practice of law. Should I give her the place? She should just come here. There's a round of applause for her. I know lots of us know this already, but she stood up and then she marshaled her point. You know what she has just done? She has sold her brand, her personal brand. I now know courage. You are all young lawyers, you just come in. I gave all of you the opportunity to sell yourself, for them to know who you are, for them to appreciate the knowledge that you have, but some of us were shy. We know that digital law practice has to do with technology, but you see, technology is much more than we think. So are we good? Okay, thank you very much. So like I said, you all know my name, and you know that I'm the secretary of the MBMS Forum. I was called to, bar, to the bar some years ago like you. I was called to the bar with um, his worship, and uh, we've been friends for a while. And uh, the truth is, we started out early like this. We, we had dreams. We just sat there and said, wait, it's 22 years, just like that. And we just said, she said, thank God we are here, we're alive, we're well. Right, so now you're starting. Someday you will be where I am and you'll be talking to other new beings. So let's just go straight up. Next slide, please. So like we said, what is this digital law practice? She said it, employing technology into legal practice, technology. If I ask someone to show me their phone, then I want to look at somebody's phone. Um, what do you have in your phone that can help your legal practice? She mentioned the Nigeria Weekly Law Reports. Which other technology do you have? I know Love Pavilion. That one they did free too, so you go. Now you okay, Love Pavilion. Which other one? Law, Law Dictionary. Awesome. Okay, anything but a soft copy. Yeah. Instagram. We are coming there. So as I was saying, so this is a lot of practice. This deploying technology. What what is it not? It is not spending hours and hours on Instagram without having a message, something of value, something to, something to improve your audience or something to build your brand. It is not just having a phone or a tab or something that you're online. That's, that's not practice. You need to deploy the technology in practice. What do I do as a lawyer? How can I take that thing from the just regular manual to digital? That's, that's what it's all about. Next slide, please. I'm going to be as brief as possible because I know you guys are a bit tired. Okay, the evolution of the legal industry. Thank you. You put when you wear your wig, your gown. Oh, there's one pocket at the heart. Where people are going to be appreciated. Nobody's going to appreciate you. Nobody's I'm going to appreciate you. I'm going to be you. you. My bill. I'm going to be you. This is what I'm for. My bill. This is what I'm going to be you. I'll break it down for you. And then you're going to pay ahead. Sometimes you pay ahead. Right? So things have changed. Things have changed.
Now, one of the limitations of this old order is that everything was manual. It's just like if you used to if you file matters in court in the registry, everything was manual. You will go there, present this one, they will stamp, you move from here to here, but now that's not the case. Thankfully, in River State, we have the e filing platform. How many of you have filed any matter on that platform? How many? I want to see your hands, please. Our new weeks. Okay. Wow. Clap for yourselves. I'm happy that some of us have. But you see, that platform simplifies everything for you. From the comfort of your home, you can file any process. So that is the limitation we had in the old order, but now we have moved. Next slide, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So you would have to ask me, what are the benefits? You know, what are the benefits of this digital law practice? Why should I deploy technology? I'm sure if I will ask, I've said a few. Uh, some of us are on our phones. I don't know if you could look up to me. Okay. So what do you think is the benefit if you've ever deployed any any form, any form? Like some people say, law pavilion. What do you think is the benefit? The last row there, can somebody tell me one benefit? The benefit of deploying digital law practice. I can't hear you, please. Instead of doing things manually, now that you can use technology, what benefits have you gotten or you think you have, should have? Okay, good afternoon. I think uh, basically it makes practice easy and then uh, quite accessible. Okay. okay. Okay, so I'll just say that it enhances your efficiency. Thank you very much. It enhances your efficiency. The thing that you could have taken days to do, you find out that you can do it in shorter time. It enhances your efficiency. It also enhances your productivity. Imagine that I had to go and file one document. I will come all the way from my office down to the court premises when I finish. And then maybe I'll see you somebody. Ah, I don't know now. Hi, really. I will now do all that I was doing. In fact, I will meet my friend. If I met his worship there, maybe he was not on the bench. I can tell you for free that I will find one place I eat a fan soup. She used to like a fan a lot. So we'll just sit down, eat and relax, and time will be gone. They will now tell me, ah, you haven't finished this. I will finish my work. But you see, when you can do this deploy technology, it shows that you can now, you know, have more productivity. And then improve client service. One of the things we do with technology is video conferencing, as you all know. You can actually take a um, brief online, Zoom, Teams. You don't need, you know, it depends on your, the kind of clients that you have. But as some clients, if you make, if you brand yourself in such a way that people see that you're that kind of lawyer, the kind of clients that come to you are attracted to the kind of practice that you do. So these are the people who will now come to you. So it improves your client's communication. Your client can send you something online. How many of us here and then your client sends you something in your mail or something? In fact, wants to talk to you. And you say, okay, let me just set, schedule a meeting. 20 minutes is over. Now, years ago, what would have happened would, would have been that you'd have spent all the time either, you know, back and forth, and then he comes, and then you wait for him, you know, there's traffic of artillery, and then all that, but all that is gone. So, of course, the next one is cost saving. You can, we, all, we all know that it saves costs because we are not doing them physically. And then finally, the scalability, I mean, it's scalable. If I'm doing something for five people, like I, I can do five at once and send to them while in my firm. But if I was going to go one by one by one, I can imagine two in a day, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to cover such grounds. Next slide, please. 
Now, what are the digital tools for Lego research? I was so happy when she started up with Love Pavilion, Nigerian Weekly Lego Online. Who can tell me more? I want, I want you guys to think, the ones that you know, you're the ones who are online. Academia, search, yes, search engine, yes. No, I need, I need you to use the mic, please pick up the mic. This, others are taking notes. Okay, we're coming to that. We have to be careful with chat GPT. <laughs> The truth is, everything is at the fingertips now if you know how to use it. Yes, who is you said something? Crimson. The crimson, very well. Crimson, that's by Law Pavilion. Yeah. Yes, I didn't hear that. Yes, yes. Please be writing it down now because I won't say it again. They've already done it for me. Anyone else? Wait, go this flank. And I know they do this as technology. Are you from Manuel? I don't know what's going on. Everybody here is just looking at me in a funny way. Judy Legal. Judy Legal. Okay. Thank you. So let's move to the next one. I'm, I want to be very as fast as possible. I want to be interactive so that we can all learn together. Next slide, please. Okay, document management and collaboration. We already said it. You want to send a doc, uh, document to your client or to your, in the office, you're working a particular file and, um, or maybe some document or some process. I actually don't type on Word and I don't type on Word document. I use Google Docs. It may be the simplest thing, but for me, it works across all my devices. And then I, I can have someone collaborate with me. I can send, okay, okay, one of our, is she here? One of our couples, uh, like, I need to put in my report and I need help. This is how we're going to do it. So you collaborate with me and help me. She was like, okay, I sent, she sent her email, I added her. She's working on it. So I don't need to now wait and invite her over to the office. We we'll sit down together and, you know, she starts, whatever she does, I take it from them. So, you can collaborate. You know, one of the things you can do is use, you know, different um, tools to collab collaborate. It is so important because sometimes you can be in an office and your senior needs to vet your document before you send it out. So you don't need to walk in from office to office, send to here and all that, all those things help. And so that's one of the importance of um, document management and collaboration. I'm just trying to be as fast as possible. And next slide, please. I think they've talked about this, you know, communication. There's a rise in virtual communication tools in the legal field from Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and all that. Lots of people. Are we using these tools? Or we're using them just to just our class meeting, you know, your secondary school class meeting, you just allow. But you see, you can deploy those tools in your practice. That's what sets you ahead. You can use them for meetings. In fact, during the COVID, there were virtual hearings. So imagine that you now as a young lawyer who has the advantage, I mean, you have the advantage really, that's the truth. You can take on these areas where the older ones are having an issue. In fact, you can become the most valuable player on the team. Without till nothing happens, they're like, ah, where is she? You know, she knows how to, I mean, I've seen a firm where they will say, please come and put on this computer for me. I've seen it somewhere where when you open a laptop, they had a piece of paper there and they said, when you open, that the secretary wrote it and left it. Open, sir, open. Press the button at the last right. Press. Okay, allow it to boot. So they boot it. You know, so you have an advantage, right? So I don't just want you to hear these things. If you haven't used them before, go take a look at them. Download them. Don't tell me your phone is small, you have all the pictures. Music healed that but you followed her from morning to night. You didn't sleep. You are gingering in your house. This is the type of ginger for your practice. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Automation. I think we've talked about it. There are some tools you need for contract review. There are tools you need 
You know, that these are things that when you deploy, go and search for these things. It's not what they will tell you in a meeting. This time is too short for me to give you everything that I have. You need to ask yourself, what Google it? What are the tools? Someone said chat GPT. You know, eh, the amazing thing about chat GPT, number one, 2021, that's where it stops. Number two, not all the information is correct. Just put in your name now, ask about yourself. You say, I'm sorry, I apologize. You may not have enough data on this person. So it's not foolproof, right? But it helps. So some of those things, for instance, now what I use chat GPT to do is I have a contract. We just give this. And I just copy that contract and I paste it there and I say, please check out the clauses. Is there any clause missing in this type of contract? You know what happens now? Three, that's, that's, if you don't give it a prompt, you can't give you anything. You can say, draft me a contract. You say, I am an AI model. I do not draft contracts. See a qualified legal practitioner. How many of you have tried this? Lift your hand, let's you know shame. No shame. You've tried it. <laughs> you know, so so that's so the next one, please. Next slide. We are going straight to AI. I have this um short course for lawyers on AI. I found out that the older lawyers were really struggling with AI, and they just AI is going to take our jobs. Robots have come. And Mrs. Pepper, you are promoting robots. They are taking our jobs. I said, no, you can't be afraid of something you don't know. Why don't you exploit and be the lawyer who understands AI? Look, AI will not take your job. It is the person who knows how to use AI that will take your job. So as a young lawyer, what are you doing with information? You heard AI, you just relaxed. Some people have tried to chat GPT. Some people have said, okay, let me go to chat Sonic. But you see, the truth is you need to research on these things. And you know, your brain is like this. Once you look at it, you know what to do. Please research. AI is good if you know how to use it. But of course, you know, you have ethical considerations. Some of you that are going to use it for projects. Or here is your case. So if they put it to plagiarism test, I'm sure it will come out. Because they know, you know, you have a certain form. If somebody is using AI to write, when you read it, you know, unless you don't use AI yourself, it's the way it goes. But we know we can use AI for many things. They're using it now for, I mean, websites. AI will just put whatever you want. Your website is up in minutes. But of course, now you have to pay for a whole lot. So, so look at AI. Then, next slide, please. Cybersecurity. When you're a digital lawyer, you deal with a lot of data. So you must be careful about data breaches. But you know that the, as a lawyer, let me know my voice so they will hear. You can major in data privacy as a lawyer. You can make it a major. You can reach it. I'm not saying stop whatever you're doing. Continue wherever you're planted, blue where you're planted. But as an aside, those extra times that you, you go to Netflix and watch Bridgerton, Queen Charlotte for a whole, all the season till 3 a.m. Hmm? Am I am I watching somebody? Okay, good. That I know it's good for entertainment is good, but the truth is that it's very addictive. So why don't you ask yourself? Let me schedule two hours every day to add niche, find a niche just on the side. It doesn't have to be big. You, you know, you can't get everything in one day, but start building on that. You'll be shocked that in one year, people will be calling you because of course, what you what you expose yourself to. Somehow you become better at it. And you can actually speak. One day they will call you to speak on it. And that's how it is done. So please, data um, is very important for you as a digital lawyer to understand cybersecurity. Not just people take data, you must know how to preserve data. And safeguard your client's data. Slide, next slide. This is the one I love. Okay, where is that Instagram person? She stepped out. Okay, can I have your handle on Instagram? I'm going to check it now. What is your, what is your handle? Queen. Queen. Underscore here. Why I are Vex, no Vex, come put her here. I want to use her as a case study. Don't be shy. We're all learning.
Thank you, Queen. Okay, this is Queen's. Is it private? Ah, they won't know. Okay, this is Queen's um, handle. She has four pictures, four posts, 171 followers. I'm going to follow you, so you just look at 172 at once. 257 following her. Queen, but there's nothing here that shows that you're a lawyer. I could just look at this. Ah, fine girl. Hey, I'm beautiful. She's so beautiful. Let me look at your. Let me take a look at your bio. Maybe you have put something that I missed. I didn't think. I don't think I saw anything on your bio. Nothing. I'm sure many of us are here. Or. We use it for different things. We feel that I'm a lawyer all day now. Let me like cuckoo, relax, you know, relax myself, relax and throw down my hair. Wear those hair, the judges and magistrates don't want you to wear. Show that you're a fine girl. Not be all this black, 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 but you know, black is beautiful. Do you know how slim in black is? Ha. If you just want to look slim, just wear black like this. You're looking very, you know. See, the truth is, Social media is a gift to this age. I have made money from social media. Please a round of applause for his worship. Thank you so much for your time. I know you have to go. We will miss you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Social media, online branding and marketing is important, but I know we have that thing that lawyers are not supposed to have uh, we said uh, rule what 39 go and read the rule well the first sentence is you can advertise the bot in this way so that I don't know that lost school thing that lawyers should not advertise just follow the rules that have been said before you what what the rule says is do not solicit no solicitation. Ah, come and see me. I am the best lawyer in town. That's solicitation. I register businesses. Meanwhile, I can craft a story around when businesses that I've registered and how happy my client was. I didn't tell you to come and meet me. But with my client's review, you self go use, suppose no, say, this lawyer should be waiting with you. So when you are online, it's good to relax. But you must find a way to sell your brand as a lawyer. Someone should be able to reach out to you and say, ah, I saw this lawyer on social media. In fact, I had one review recently. A young man, I think he's 21. His partners are 22 and 23. They just wanted to launch their startup. And I was like, why? OK, I actually have this. I will get to that. He met me and said, send me a message because we didn't meet. You met by 12. Please, can you? I need, I need you to help me. We need your counsel. Of course, man, smart boy, I did. I already have my retainership structure for SMEs and startups. So I like sent him everything. I was like, okay, I'm interested in the quarterly retainership. I said, this is it. This is a discount for this week. But after this week, you know, now we must put fear of missing out. He now says, okay, he signed up immediately. He just renewed some days ago. Why? Because I was intentional online. Even being here, even as you spoke, suppose you went online and said, today I was opportunity to speak while this, this was going on, blah, 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 put a picture of yourself. Who cares? Just something that gives knowledge that this person has sense. You understand? You're not just a lawyer. You're one that people can access. You know when you're on social media, people can access you. You don't have to say, I'm the best lawyer in town. You don't have to um, 
beg people to come to you. Once you're putting out content that is attracting, content that meets the market, you know, if I, I want young people to be my clients, I'm not gonna be talking every time about, you know, I need to, you know, move my content towards that. So let's not spend too much time. Of course, the strategies for on online marketing, branding, content creation, and then building a personal brand through thought leadership. And of course, an online uh, networking. Some of you are online. You are snobbish. And it's the social media. When you are online, on social media, please be social. Define your boundaries. There's no find them on that, unless you're not intentional. If you are afraid that people, people will always come to you. Have you seen my inbox? My spam. Hey. Hello, hello, pretty, small picking when I feel born. But that is the hazard, you know, but I already know that so I can handle it. I don't answer you now. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, hello, hello. Some people, one after night, hello there. Yes, next day, hello there. Hello there, there. I just laugh and pass. So I don't know how they got into my WhatsApp. That's the worst. Hello, ma. Good evening, ma. Good morning, ma. This guy has done this thing for like five days. Good morning, good evening, good morning. One day I said I'll screen grab it, take it to another social media and celebrate it. I send over his number, let's just worship him, he's doing well. So the truth is that there are going to be hazards, but don't be afraid. Look at the good part of it. Position yourself as the go-to legal practitioner. You know, some people feel that when I'm on social media, people will not come and know my family. I mean, the truth is in social media, you decide the content you put out and for which purpose. Next slide, please. If not, I will stay here forever. Adapting. This one actually is for the older lawyers. You know, there's some people that feel that, ah, this is how things have been done. What's this new wave? Every day, they're saying uh, technology, technology. The same people now are employing young lawyers in their firm. Just because they them to yourself. Add something. Aside from legal practice, add something that when you go somewhere, you say, no, this one is more than a lawyer. That's actually the hashtag I use. More than a lawyer. Because you should be. You should be able to deploy technology very well. So adapt. Okay, we're going. You should adapt to a digital law practice. The world now is technology driven. You know, you must stay updated. You must stay updated. So what are the challenges and obstacles? One of the challenges is that we're afraid of our rules of professional conduct. Many people are really afraid. Some people are coming back. Stop this in your team. They're giving free advice. Not only you be lawyer. I said, no, I'm creating content to target my market. Do you know that if I want a brief in 
maybe family law, maybe divorce. I just do a series. What I give you is why and what. I will never give you how. Why do divorces happen? Hey, we will talk, Jesus. This man did this, this man did this. What is divorce? Hey, I will give you. I will give you. you are giving knowledge for free. This purpose is intentional. How you can get a divorce, how you will go and do a divorce, you have to come for consultation. When you come, I'll give you my link. You go to my center page. You pay money. You land on my WhatsApp. Business WhatsApp. Nobody others WhatsApp when they lost beliefs. Business WhatsApp. And before you know it, I'm talking with you. You have paid money for my time. So anything you're telling me now, you know, I know that I've gotten money for the value that I carry, right? And before you know it, the person thought it may, may or may not lead to grief. But have I earned money? Have I? Okay, good. So you must know how to use social media. And another challenge is that um, I don't have time. Some people told me how they work with Charlotte. They are so happy. In fact, they've gone back to watch some episodes. You know, when she said, Tell me you love me and I will leave here. Go, go, go. Tell me you love me. Tell me you don't love me. He said, With a breath. Since you came over the wall, and I saw you, I love you. She said, Love you, love you. See what I can remember. But ask me now, the one that will concern love, will you remember it? Because it's, 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 it's interesting. Now, but the point is, find time for these things. Before you know it, 10 years is gone. Before you know it. And some of us that are rushing marriage, you know, I was one of those people. His relationship is here. We're like, all oh, these people that are married in the hospital. What's going on? Me and I feel like, how are they getting engaged like this? But somebody said, don't worry, when, when we come out, our eyes will clear. But unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I got married the same November that I used my exams. Me, after all my plans, I said to myself, when I finished, that was in Huari, or the last set, I would like me and my girlfriend to stay back in Abuja, we go like one small flat, you know? No one say, you know, we need boys for that, anyhow. Flat, they'll have one more car. You know, just generally enjoy practice. But what happened? It didn't happen. What happened? I got married. I got pregnant. Everything. Here is the story. The bottom line is, you need to do more as a female lawyer. I think we are, I won't follow my slides. We're out of time. I wish I had more time to talk to my sisters. You will want my friend. I know. Have I done up to 30 minutes? It's <laughs> you. When you were watching Charlotte's night, didn't talk, it has reached my tongue. Okay, so where is your place in all of this? Where is your place? Don't bother with the slides. Like I said, number one, become the most valuable person. If you are in the firm, become the most valuable person. If they are looking for reports, they've given me paper, don't worry, I'm, I'm taking the cue, I'm taking the hints of the other reports. Become the most valuable person. Anywhere, number two, bloom where you are planted. Some of us will never go to shell, forget about it. Some of us will never go to elf. Wherever you have found yourself, if all they've been done is corporate brief, learn it like bread. Learn it. Whatever the client comes, when they need research, do it. If all you do is go to court every day, boom. Follow, appearing with, appearing with, don't worry, wonder you are paying. But you must continue. So bloom where you have been planted. Stop looking out and become dissatisfied with where you are. I want to be in a better place. My friend, where they are working, they are paying her 100K. Everybody will start with 100K. Start with what you have and improve. Number three, upgrade your digital skills. Like I said, upgrade your digital skills. Number four, carve a niche as a side hustle. I didn't say your main hustle. A side hustle, this in law, it doesn't have to be anything else. So that while you are attending to whatever you're doing in your daily life, you have one thing that you enjoy in law that you want to be known for in the future. Then finally, embrace technology, like we said. The legal field is constantly evolving, so staying adaptable and embracing long life learning 
will be crucial to your success as a digital lawyer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really as a 21st century lawyer, you really cannot, you really cannot sideline a uh, technology uh, to be a global player and effective legal practitioner. Technology is of great advantage to you. So we have some questions here already. Um, some questions were actually directed to, we have two here that were directed to um, Dr. Rita, but uh, it's also interesting that the, the other topics uh, intermingle. So I trust that the questions can also be answered with our speakers here. In fact, I know that they can be answered. So going on immediately, um, the question says from our new weeks, it says, Please, what would be your advice to a newbie interested in health law, considering how that aspect is not fully known in Nigeria? And I'll just read the second question at once. It says, secondly, please, what is your advice as regards one doing masters immediately after NY? Thank you. Let me take on the first one. Medical law, obviously, is a new field. My advice is, number one, buy books, resources. The advantage is that you will have more knowledge, but it is not. Find the association. They have medical law practitioners. Find that association. Find how to join why? Because there, there will be, there will be um, courses, they will lead you to the courses you need to go to and the things you need to learn. Interesting. Number three, pray, make brief for medical law committee. And when it does, don't run away and say, I cannot do it. Find someone to collaborate with, the senior, so that they can teach you the rudiments or you can do it together. If you don't have knowledge in something, then in fact, sometimes in the books, you them know what they are doing, so they can let you know any opening, every lawyer you can get any brief. So you need to learn it first. Thank you very much. People do not clap for me. Thank you. And it's not to work, Mrs. Pepper said. My, my boss, when I was in practice, used to tell me that you never tell one who has come to you for a brief that you don't, don't know what to, what, that you don't know what they're talking about. Always find a diplomatic way to say, I'll get back to you. I'll uh, just give me a few hours, I'll get back to you. That getting back to you, music will read and find out all you need to know about that particular topic. Then the question about doing your master's immediately after you service. The earlier you can do those things, the better for you, because once you get married and start having children, you will be wishing you had done all those things even before you enter uh, youth service. So the earlier you can do all those things and get it settled with. The better for you. Thank you so much. Okay, and this question is for uh, Mr. Victor. Does can a new volunteer has service at the RSM gain experience in, in the unique field of activity? So, are there um, internship opportunities or other opportunities? comes to volunteer services. <clears throat> uh, we have a provision for those who want to volunteer. There is a scheme we launched in 2021 in December. We call it 
Volunteer Mediator Scheme, VMS. But you have to be a mediator to be part of that scheme. And uh, that scheme addresses the problems of, of indigent parties. Usually they don't have enough money to pay. In fact, they don't have money to pay. So uh, we have a register of volunteers. So you can, um, you can be part of that. But there is something also that we are doing at the multi-door courthouse that will interest some of you. Now, if you are an associate, you know, usually if you're an associate in any APR area, it's not likely that you may be appointed to, you know, conduct a session. But you can serve as a secretary or a registrar in an ad hoc APR panel. At the multi-door courthouse, you can serve as a secretary. We have registrars. We have a registrar. And then we have registry staff. Now, if you don't have a, an ADR qualification, I don't know how you, where you are going to be placed, but I have mentioned in the lecture that if you don't have an ADR qualification and you are a lawyer, you can still be useful as a counsel. Section 9 of the RSFDS law provides what you can do for us. That's the point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. But once again, highlighting the opportunities in ADR. So, uh, next question. This is very very It says, please, is it compulsory to go into education first so as to get the experience before going into any other aspect of practice, example, in house? Okay. Hey. From experience, I would advise that you actually do litigation because litigation makes it gives you that confidence. Even if you're going to leave it and you meet people who are talking about some cases, you won't be totally lost. But if you've not had the experience of going to court, knowing what it means to uh, as a court police and all those things, you'll be you'll be feeling like you're not actually a lawyer. But if you've had those maybe one, two, three years of litigation before you veer off into any other place you want to go to, if perchance you meet other people who are in the in actual practice, you won't be tabula rasa as it is. You won't be an empty state when it comes to that particular area. So I would advise that you actually, it's tedious, but it's better in the long run. Thank you so much, Will. I don't know if you guys have any other. Well, we all know that uh, if I went to Bill Holmes, the one time the justice of America, he says that the laws are the prophecies of the courts. When you talk about uh, uh, law as a profession, what many people know is the courtroom, the outcome of the courtroom. If you go into, if you go to the streets to interview people, the idea of a lawyer is the litigation lawyer. It's just now that things are beginning to change. So now you you have you have the legal philosopher, the one who reads law books, law literature, but he is not a litigation person. There's a, there's a difference. As a lawyer, you are first and foremost trained to get to the courtroom. So I join my colleague in advising that the best you can do as soon as you are called to the park is to enter the courtroom and practice for some time. Now, there's one advantage that practicing lawyers, courtroom lawyers have that others do not have. You see, when you appear before a judge or a magistrate, you are like on this spot test. You may have done your research, but there is some, somebody there, the judge seated up there, who is going to quiz you, is going to you know, interrogate you on, on the research I've done. You might think that, okay, I've done it, and I 
I'm so confident about it. But by the time he begins to ask some questions, you will discover that there are some areas you have to really go into again to cover. I don't know whether I get the point. You may not have that in another environment. Like if you are in high council as a secretary, you may not have that kind of um, experience. So it is better you spend like, for me, five years with the list. Five years of courtroom practice all around, including going to the police station, you know, bailing people and things like that. They are all part of it. And by the time you now specialize, or you go into an area, whatever, no matter the lawyer that comes to you in time to come, you, you will never intimidate you. You cannot be intimidated. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have spent some time for members of the bench and also one of the committee's director of the River State Monument Courthouse. I, I, if, if I can also ask uh, Mrs. Irene Pepper, you mentioned that you take on a um, training, so which I've actually seen uh, quite a few. I wanted to know where you meet or other lawyers here can um, access such information when you have training. On. You have that. Like, it's on Twitter, it's on uh, Okay, thank you very much. What I actually do is I use um, a platform called Stella. I'm sure many of you know it. And that's why I host my courses. It's a paid service. That's why I hold my, I host my courses. And um, I try to make them very accessible to lawyers. I have courses for lawyers. I have courses for business owners. It just depends which um, topic I would like to work on. So if you get the link, once you get the link to my store, you see the area of courses and you choose whatever fits your budget and your interest. Thank you very much. And where do you uh, post your things? Yes, and we didn't finish my slides, so I, and I, we're out of time. So, but I, I think we have a group, you have a WhatsApp group, and then I'll, I'll give it, um, the state lead will drop all that you need, everything that you need to send. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And once again, I truly applaud our speakers for their uh, wonderful expertise and they are very, very kind patients. Thank you so, so much for investing. I still have a few more questions. <laughs> that's why I'm, that's why I'm <laughs> So, but I thank you for your investment as well. Definitely, this will show for the future as well. So, thank you so, so much. So, I just uh, have a few more questions. It says, Okay, okay, one more question. One more question. Yes, yeah, and um, I think what what we could also do um, through the um, NBA Women Forum at school or the organizers of this meeting, these questions to be sent and then um, put the response as well. Okay, Jefferson has assured me of that. So thank you once again. I guess in view of that, maybe, uh, okay. Can I make a suggestion? Make it very easy. Yes. Um, I learned the um, speakers. I'm thinking, why don't they add us to the WhatsApp instead? So when they drop the questions, we can answer them. We exit in one day. It's not forever. So that you have any questions, like some people are not here, some are gone. And those who have questions that we can't answer now, is it not possible, sir? Oh, oh okay. Okay, thank you so so much. Uh, your worship, this is actually for you. Says, sir, please, I am interested in knowing how to become a trainer of trainees. And then the second question as well says, um, for an APR neutral, don't you have to be a professional or expert in that? What good options are available then? Reference to it. Yeah. Okay, the last question of the question. Okay, the first question I ask is, please, I am interested in knowing how to become a trainer or training as a new... Let me answer that one first. For you to be uh, a TOT, you first of all have to be an expert in that area then this is another level of training for you. 
It's like you want to be a lecturer. Then you study, um, and then you go back to have a postgraduate diploma in education. That's how it is. So you cannot be a TOT when you are not first, you know, an expert in a particular area or area. Next question. For an ADR neutral, you also have to be a professional or expert in that field. And what are the But the point is, are, are you willing, willing to do so? so? Because in the request for resources, resources and uh, some uh, patients, that's, 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 that's the point. point. A good, good number, number of uh, so that people, people who have trained themselves as associates, and they just stop at that, and uh, they are no longer interested. They are always talking about what they have lost, not what they are going to gain. But as new weeks, don't listen to such things. Just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. You'll get to a point where the road will be quite clear and uh, the, the millions will start to Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. And this is the final question. There is a question. Yeah, this is the final one. There's a question here for the uh, the for Mrs. Chi in Okorocha, but that question will be sent to the WhatsApp group, and I trust that she'll be able to answer that. Uh, but for um, the worship, Mr. Victor Mindy, final question is, have you registered with the River State for the Court House? And um, what's next for me and the Mindy? Um, um, am I going to be informed of the briefs when you come, or do I go there to make the fire? What are you registering as? Are you training ADR already? If you are training ADR already, then you must have an area of specialization. We do not just register people generally, like you bring an ADR certificate, it says certificate in ADR. It's like you are a jack of all trades, and certainly you're a master of uh, none. So you will trade in a, a particular ADR um, mechanism, because when the courts, Make orders. A court give uh, a court give the specific ADR area to be used. When parties enter into pre-dispute uh, ADR agreements, most times they specify what they will use if the dispute if dispute arises. For instance, arbitration clause, mediation clause. Even if you have a multi tier clause, it will come in sequence. Negotiation, you have to get a negotiator. You cannot, uh, because you train in arbitration, say I'm not a negotiator. You have thought about that. It will descend into mediation. Is the mediator will handle it at that stage. And then it will now come down to arbitration. Then before finally, Litigation will be the last. We call it multi multi tiered ADR clause. You know, it's in that uh, grading. So you have to specialize and give it your time. Give it your time. The problem people have in ADR is that they take it casual. And when you take it casual, if you have an ADR brief, you may not do well. Um, 
when I was doing a training in uh, that um, an arbitrator, somebody who called himself an arbitrator, you know, presided. But when it got to the point of writing the award, he could not write the award for six months. For six months, he could not write the award. And, and one of the advantages of India is speed. Do you understand? So what I'm saying there is that study, study, study. I am happy that all of us are saying the same thing. Because in this country, in fact, I'm not saying in this country, people are too weak. They are too interested in making big money. And ADM does not offer you that. But if you train properly and um, we have a matter, the way it works in the multiple quarters is that we give them a short list of experts in that area, interest in that area. And they will give them the short, the short list will include uh, some form of resume for each of the neutrons. We'll explain to them this is, you know, write a little thing about each person. The parties themselves will now choose whom they want the matter, whom they want to have their matter, you know, before him. That's how it works. So it's not a question of uh, uh, what inputs, what Nigeria to call Magoma, but there's nothing like Magoma about it. But when you now come in, we talk about turnover rates. If we test you, you come in and you are not able to perform, then we invite you the next time you're not able to perform. Of course, we, we are doing business. <laughs> there is no how we always uh, present your name. I get So it's all about creativity, it's all about studying, it's all about being on top of the game. And I think that the women can do very well because what is about a woman is that if she, if she applies her mind to a particular thing, she will hit it. And I'm particularly happy, you know, interacting with you because when you train a woman, you train the nation. It's, it is, it has been, it is, it's, it is a fact in all ages. And I am happy, that's why I even have to stay back a little. I know that. My, my coming before you will make a huge impact because you have a subtle way of you know spreading things around. And before you know it, uh, the Portugal Court House will be a booming uh, institution. So I'm happy to be in your midst. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A warm round of applause to our distinguished speakers for their time today and all of the knowledge that they have invested in us today. Thank you so much to our Now, maybe we also give a round of applause to the moderator. Did they fantastic? Just to say something uh, about the ADR. Before moving, uh, find out, we are still on this. That we can get about 50 persons. The ADR uh, will give us a discount for 50 persons. If uh, ordinarily it would be like 150,000 close to 30% of the cost. So if you are interested, indicate on your platform so that we we'll add your name. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know a lot of um, questions may be springing up in your minds right now, but they already said distinguished um, speaker already said they should add it to the platform, the WhatsApp platform. Okay, the general um, secretary of the MDP, yes, sorry, sorry about that. So if you have more questions, you can put on the platform, especially for the general secretary. And again, she said something that particularly touched me. I was on that very table as to what to use our uh, what uh, social media platforms to do. You know, for instance, now my own social media platforms, I'm sure people don't even know that I'm a lawyer. So from now, I hope to do better. Thank you very much. Thank you, your watch. We do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Now we're going to go to the next.
on our program, which is what uh, a brief council by the NBA chairman. This will be done by the representative of the NBA, the Gamer Branch. Please, you're welcome. Thank you. And he appreciates the women and the forum. I am here on the behalf to admonish every one of us as new ways. I say first because I was also a new ways. You are welcome to this foremost legal profession. But as an admonition, the very first thing I want us to take home is that we must be teachable. Coming into the profession is not feeling that I am a lawyer. I am going to practice as a lawyer. I know it all. You must first of all be teachable. If you are not teachable, some seniors may just let you be by what you think you know. I have some persons in the office. We have a, a protocol in our office that if you do any document, you must go through the second hand. So go through it and say, okay, look at this area, look at this area, look at this area. Some persons come in and they tell you, no, this thing I did is right. You should not correct me. And then what you see is, with time, your seniors let you be. And you see yourself going out just uh, like garbage in, garbage out. But if you learn to be teachable, you will learn, learn the right things and you will know how to do it right. Secondly, you must also learn to work as a team. When you come in into a firm, if you are the one that are chosen to be a litigation lawyer, you work with the other members of the firm as a team. No matter whether it is your personal brief, if you're working with it as a team, you see that you go a longer way and you do it right in most times. Because knowledge sometimes can be limited. You alone may not know it all, but somebody else can add each other look more accessible. And you must also learn to be very, very, very patient. Like our speakers, the Margaret of your work has said, the profession is not a, a one with a paid salary. In most cases, you only have allowances, which may not carry you through. But if you are not patient, then you miss it. Most of us come in and then they think from the very first day they get into the office, they should be given the whole file to say, take this file to court. But most often it doesn't work like that. Like a moderator of the design said, you can be appearing with, appearing with, and someday appear as a person. When you are appearing with again, you must learn not to be with your senior in court because your senior is the one doing the job. You are on your phone. You are browsing through your Google. You are browsing through Instagram. You are browsing through things. You are in court to learn. It is a learning process, a continuous one. I believe even our worship are still in that learning process where the even lawyers come in court. So you must take it daily as it goes. You're in court, your mother has not been called off your learning because the other lawyer who is up doing something is teaching you by what he's doing. Or by the corrections that are coming from the bench to that very lawyer, you are also learning. So as you come in, please have the spirit 
to be teachable, have a spirit to learn, have a spirit to be patient. The economy is so bad, we all need money now. But if you have it in mind that it is about money in this profession, you may need it. The whole lot of things you need to get is at that point where the money is not really coming. And like uh, my, it was she said, five years is good enough for you to learn. And it depends on where you are choosing to be as a lawyer from the beginning. If you think you want to be in the bench, I think litigation is good because it will grow you to be good when you get there. If you want to be in a company, you also bear in mind that when you're looking for firms, you should look for firms that work towards that area. So even while you're going to be a litigation lawyer for the first three to five years, you are there learning how to be in the corporate world. So your decision now, the building of your mind as to where and which line of litigation or a practice as a lawyer you want to be is important. And most of all, please, once again, be very much patient. That is where most of us miss it. But I believe all the faces I've seen here today are very patient and they are going to make it in this profession. God bless you and the work. Thank you very much, Mrs. Katia, for that admonition. Now it's time to appreciate all our speakers. So this is a type of presentation of awards. So we humbly welcome the state lead and other presenters to please come forward as we present these awards to our distinguished speakers. Thank you. Please may we call on Dr. Thomas Mercy Okay Chinda. Please, ma'am, could you please come forward? Please, ma'am, could you please come forward? So that's almost thank you. You have to Please may we call on, humbly call on your worship, Mr. Victor Wake. So please come forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your worship, Lady Barry Dam, ma'am, please. On behalf of the Nigerian Bar Association Women's Club, uh, it's my honor to present to you my elder sister, His Worship, Lady Barry Dam, Papa. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. I present this award on behalf of the Nigerian Bar Association Women for Rivers Group. 
It is to you, Irene Nyobon Purple Esquire, in appreciation of your great and important support and dedication to the Congratulations. Very eventful day, a wonderful day. And this day was made very possible by the chair of the organizing committee. She committed not only her time, but every other thing you can imagine. Please hold on, my dear. Before you is Dane, Doctor of Law, Doctor of English, Mrs. Mercy, the kid, Chiba. She also happens, incidentally, to be the mother of our very lovely moderator today. So, in thanks, I invite our state lead to please step forward and present our plate of appreciation. Hey, we don't know how to thank you enough. On behalf of the forum, we increase the use in appreciation of your great and impressive contribution to the A resounding applause for our speakers. I expected a great event, but this was phenomenal. This was phenomenal. And you know, we invited four speakers and we ended up having five. And each of them did a great job. So we appreciate our chairperson of the MBAWF, Mrs. Chair Okorocha Esquire, State Lead, Dr. Glory Ozuru, members of the planning committee, and indeed all members of the Nigeria Bar Association Women Forum. I say a big thank you to our speakers. We're indeed enriched. We're living better than we came. And we appreciate you. We also want to appreciate our new weeks. They came in from the CDS. They came in from there to this place and they visited here. We appreciate you. You just started showing into greatness. And we know that seated before us are legal luminaries. Great law teachers, senior advocates, performing judges and magistrates. And we're truly proud of you. We thank also members of the fourth estate of the rare that have been here. In fact, some were here, they actually appeared here even before 10 a.m. And other members of the technical crew, every person that has contributed, our dear sponsors, we mentioned them at the beginning. We are truly grateful. And for all of us, um, as we go back home, we pray that the Almighty God will go with us. And that what we have learned to put into practice will exceed expectations in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I invite the person for the closing prayer. Confidence, please come and close it. Closing prayer. Please be upstanding to say short prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the success of today's event. We hand over our going homes to your hands. We pray lead us safely to our various destinations. Help us, Lord, to be that we to be. Help us 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 to be. Help us
help us live in accordance to all we get this afternoon. And at the end, we need to be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You know, it's been a great day. Please, please, other photographs. I'm coming. Thank you. 